Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your Sexy Ranch Hand co-host, Calderness. This episode, we're going to do a huge deep dive on not one, but two threads on HC Realms in Thread Dead Redemption this week, as well as answer a pretty awesome listener question. This is episode 424. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how okay, six yeah. people yeah. think I am funny. It's a hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which Absolute fools, it's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clips like that forever. Are you <laughs> kidding me? I hate the wolf attacks him. Let's attack him because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5, that's D I A L 5. For 5% off your Cool Stuff Inc. order. If this is your first episode of Dial H for Hero Clicks or you're just getting into the game, we have our new player episode down, a link in the description below to the YouTube video. Uh, you can also find it on our main podcast stream on Podbean, iTunes, or wherever you are listening to this. Joining me, like always, in the studio is my co host, your Dial H for Hero Clicks champion, Simeon Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? Oh, yeah. I'm full of vigor and life. And uh, <laughs> oh, what's that? The sky's falling. Oh, just kidding. I'm not an HC Realms commenter usually, so uh, that chicken little stuff doesn't quite fly gonna... around this coop. <laughs> oh my gosh. The puns, man. You're yeah. starting out hot the gate with the puns. Yeah, because chickens live in chicken coops. Get they it? live in coops, and they can sort of like fly. They're the yeah, birds of wings. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I got it. We Now that we've explained the joke, now everybody gets it, and they can all laugh. <laughs> I always laugh. think of it's chickens hilarious. like the the first Toy Story when uh, Buzz Lightyear finally comes to like terms and he's oh. like he's like uh, or no Woody's like Buzz you're flying and Buzz is like no Woody we're falling with style that's a chicken oh, and he says it yeah chickens don't fly they they glide and they fall with style they're like I mean, yeah a bowling ball that tries to like raise itself up twenty feet in the air it's pretty impressive. You know, I'm turkeys impress me in that way because turkeys don't really fly either, but they can, they can glide pretty far. Yeah, they, they roost can, in trees they get up stuff. there. Yeah, like it's pretty I'm scary. Like, oh, wow, you can you can them eat, go. Like, wild turkeys can weigh up to like thirty some pounds. So yeah, it's a big creature. Yeah. It might might just be above you when you're taking a hike. You're like, yeah. oh, just throwing wild turkeys drop up there. down. Australia yeah. thinks they've got a bad with those drop bears, but we got drop birds, and they've got like no skin <laughs> on their face. <laughs> So we got like drop birds, zombie faced, uh, skin and gizzard bird. Yeah, plus yeah, they got that gross little little thing. Yeah, buzzard is giz, gizzard, buzzard, 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 gizzard, gizzard, buzzard, whatever thing. I don't know. Um, what made you happy this week, my man? What made me happy this week? So I'm starting a timer, so we don't go uh, thirty minutes. <laughs> well, uh, luckily, again. I don't. I don't have a lot. We went into a lot last time. Um, I've been playing Control. I haven't gotten a lot further in it, but it is, it's like rounding around. You know, I haven't gotten the one power that I really want to unlock, which okay. if you know anything about Control, you've probably, that's one of like the first ones they show in like all the gameplay videos. It's like the glidey, flyy power, and I really want to get mm-hmm. that, but I haven't gotten it yet. Um, still a fun game. Uh I do one thing that I wish it had similar to Jedi Fallen Order is when I die in control, it'd be really cool if I could return to the same point and recapture my like points or hit the enemy that killed me and get my points back. But instead, I just lose 10% of whatever I have gained. So oh. yeah, the the less you like level up and the less you spend your points, the more it hurts when you die. And I was in kind of at a risk. where yeah. yeah I was in one section where I went from 30,000 down to like 8,000 of whatever the points were because I just kept Ooh. dying over and over and over again. And I was like, well, I'm broke, I guess. But uh, that game's been really fun. It's been a pretty decent week as far as weather goes. And uh, I also just had a really uh, stress free and pretty like chill week because. <laughs> not because my work wanted me to, but because uh, I had like certain tests and stuff that I had to do. I had to get recertified oh, sure. for my DOT and stuff. So um, I set like for 
two hours in a doctor's office waiting to get my name called and watched some movie with Kristen Stewart when she's in a space station and something explodes. I don't know what it was, but she's like brushing her teeth and there's a spider and then a bunch of things explode. And then she's talking to this guy with like a big lump on his head. And I was like, I don't know what this is, but I've got two hours to kill in here. Kristen, so Kristen Stewart's the, the vampire girl, Twilight girl, right? Is that I the actress? I think so. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's who it was. Let me, I've seen. Let me look at this. That's is not it Rath Kirsten, of Dithera, or is it because Kirsten? No, no Kirsten. That's Kirsten Dunst. That's Mary Jane. Yeah, Kirsten Stewart. Kirsten He's like, yeah, Stewart. Like Side Wrath of Zathura is a great movie. That's not like a space station. They're in like a house in uh, space. This says underwater. Underwater movie. Water doesn't sound like space though. Rudderless. So yeah. What is? Um, mm. I'm looking at these images. Doesn't this is definitely right. the doesn't movie. Sound right. It says underwater. I don't know if that was the name of the movie. Well, maybe I, I thought they were in space. space. But it's like the underwater sub station or something. It's dark outside, and so I it mean, looks like space. It was, they were on like some station called Kepler or something, and I was like, oh. that sounds space-ish. It's yeah, this is like definitely the, the movie. Elves that make cookies. Yeah, it's called Underwater, and I watched... I mean, if you want to see her save a spider, spoiler alert, she saves a spider in the first couple minutes. Um, Ooh, who cares? I don't remember any of the rest of the movie other than an explosion and uh, a guy with a lump on his head. And then, mm. yeah, that was basically it. But pretty chill we week. Time. So instead of yeah. doing anything yeah. productive, I I focused quite heavily on this movie that I'm doing a great rundown on. Yeah, um, dude, you are. Obviously, you should do paid movie reviews. Yeah. If you want to see the movie review, Simeon's Underwater. This is my movie top, review. top Kristen Stewart movies of all time. It's definitely oh, wow. in that top. Dang, I, that's I won't go over the list right list now. Of, that's for a video. Yeah, of course. Yeah. No, no, that's, you got to give it its due, you know, give it its time in the sun. Don't just throw it in a podcast. Yeah. Well, awesome. I'm glad you had a pretty chill week, pretty relaxing week. I've, uh, I've had a pretty solid week. Uh, play more Evil Dead the game. That's not going to change, uh, despite the fact wait times are incredibly long, depending on when you play the game, to try to play Survivor. The player base has seemingly really fallen off, which really sucks. And I'm I'm really bummed about it, because it's like, once again, it's like within the first two months of the game coming out, they need to add some more new updates. They got to get people playing this game, because I love it. I still want to play the heck out of it literally every single day. But, you know, when it's a multiplayer game and you have to rely on other people to play it, it can be kind of rough, especially when it's not like a AAA title. Evil Dead isn't the most, like, well-known uh, property in the world. But it's better than Dead by Daylight, and it's better than a lot of games, so I do hope people uh, join on and play it. But probably my favorite part about playing Evil Dead is I play a lot with my little brother, and through this, I showed him a lot of the Evil Dead movies, and I realized that we hadn't seen Evil Dead 1 yet. Like, I started him off with Evil Dead 2, because that's, like, the best one. And then we watched Army of Darkness, because that's what's next. Um, the reason I always skip the first Evil Dead is because it's not necessarily, like, a movie that's going to grab you and be like, oh, wow, I can't wait to watch the rest. It's more of just, like, a bad horror movie, because that's what it is. It's a bad yeah. horror movie. It's low budget. Um, it's low budget, you know. But now that we, like, enjoy all the characters from the games, and, the you know, the characters in the games say voice lines that call back to them in the movies... It actually, I enjoyed it more because I hadn't seen the first Evil Dead in, in a few years. I only watched it twice. There's a certain scene that happens to a certain character that just makes me not want to watch it for some reason. I'm just not a big fan of trees doing that to people. So I just, yeah, I'm like, yeah, I don't need to watch that again. Yeah, I've, I've done vegetation um, work. Yeah, not a fan. But but anyways, no, we, we, <laughs> we rewatched Evil Dead 1 and I was like, wow. I actually really, really like this movie. I don't know if it's just because I'm just an Evil Dead fan now and I'm not watching it when I first watched it just to, like, figure out what this is all about. And now I'm just like, oh, no, yeah. Seeing where the characters came from and, you know, knowing where they go, this is so interesting. Especially, like, so um, Scotty in the game has weapon mastery lumberjack axe. So he attacks faster, does more damage, whatever, with the lumberjack axe. Um, and so when he finally picks up the lumberjack axe and starts hitting a dead eye with it in the movie, we're like, Oh, Scotty got the, got the legendary lumberjack axe," or like, whatever. We were just making a dumb joke, but it was, it was fun. It was cool. Um, but yeah, I also realized 
uh, that you can't stream it anywhere. And I had to dust off all my DVDs and find it because, like, you can literally cannot find Evil Dead anywhere to stream for free. You have to pay, like, three bucks on Amazon or whatever. It's very annoying. Very annoying. Uh, but, yeah, that has been that has been my week. Eamon, Evil Dead, I love it. I'm actually... I'm probably going to make an HC Realm set of my own or some type of thread somewhere where I'm going to probably give dials to every character in the game. When I was out at work one day, I don't know if you do this, Simeon, but I was just like thinking of dials for like how each character would work. I think it's easier to make dials for video games because they have set stats, especially with class-based games, because then I can be like oh, the sure. base stat is 1,000 for health, which means that's six clicks. And then some people have more health. Add a click, less health, minus a click. You know, you can kind of use the base stats to figure out what dials would look like in games. And I just, basically that entire day, I was like thinking about how the warrior classes compared to hunters and everything else would like work in hero clicks. And I'm like, man, I've got to make this set now because this is awesome. At least it's awesome in my brain anyways, but we'll see. We'll see, but yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get right into the news. Really cool dials that have come out since last week, since earlier this week when we talked about it. We finally have your boy, Simeon, Mad Jim Jaspers. Oh, He's crazy. Mad. Yeah, old Mad Jimmy Jasps. Old uh, MJJ. <laughs> old, uh, let's see, Cantankerous... Jimothy Jaspersons. Oh, that can't be right. All from now on, I'm not going to shorten HeroClix names. I'm not going to be one of those people that gives cute little shortened names for like characters like this. I'm going to go with a lengthening of all names. Oh, so okay. yeah, instead of Mad, it'll be like uh, Angrified Jimothy Jaspersons. I don't know. That's beautiful. You're yeah. I'm going to ruin this for everyone, hopefully. Working of the English language is truly something to behold, Simeon. Yeah, so... I am jealous. The rundown of all the new figures, so there there are pre-releases, <clears throat> uh, possibly pre-releases, possibly just people buying cases from venues that don't know better, uh, but there are people that are opening uh, X of Swords, and so we've seen new since last episode, Mad Jim Jaspers, the Super Air Prime, the Chase Apocalypse, the Chase the white sword um the legacy unus the untouchable the legacy magneto and ooh, ah, the legacy apocalypse so also that came with uh two new swords for the two chases that we saw actually there was a third chase i can't remember what the name of it was though uh was it that that one lady with the it was the old uh, Lady the Roma, kilted Kirksman. Yeah, Lady Roma. It's Miss, yeah. Miss Roma here. She doesn't come with a sword, so she's not important. But uh, oh, also, he actually doesn't do anything terribly interesting either. Yeah, Might we will be. do a full rundown. Um, but yeah, I'm a little whelmed for, by her. For this episode, or we'll go over overwhelmed. a couple figures, uh, and then we're definitely going to cover the the uh, tarot card that. Mr. PJ Boland previewed. Oh yeah, because that is that's awesome. Possibly my new favorite tarot card out of the whole set. Um, but yeah, out of Mad Jim, Apocalypse, uh, White Sword, Unus, Magneto, Apocalypse again. <laughs> what what Lots do you want to talk guys. about, Calder? What's what's your favorite? Um, it's tickling. Your I want to talk about the Legacy card Apocalypse. I think that's probably coolest thing i literally stopped scrolling as i saw it on facebook it's definitely one of the That's most exciting cool. in my opinion yeah i uh i know i think i think he's absolutely awesome and i i like what they do dogs like that and then also um whatever it's called they're the horsemen they're the original horseman sculpts from that set gsx yeah. are the, yeah, pictures the same on the horsemen from it's that cool. set or at least so, images of those <clears throat> I can go ahead and talk about Apocalypse here, though. So this is obviously the 2x2 two two Apocalypse. His top dial is going to be 300 points. And he has a 200 and 100 point dial, I believe. Yeah, he does. 200, 100. So at 300 points, he has 18 clicks of life, which is pretty cool. It's pretty gross. He's uh, 
a 10 speed, 11 attack, 18 defense, 5 damage with close combat expert uh, charge impervious. So he's going to be a 12 for 6 uh, close top dial. Armor deity, future horseman, pass ruler, and warrior keywords. No named keywords for me. No, ma'am. No, please. Keep those to yourself. I'm a I'm a Tinker Tailor generic keyword type guy, this guy. So he's got two traits. The hour of your glory is at hand, my horsemen. Rah! The bystanders on this card are horsemen bystanders, and they all have max one, uh, so one each. At the beginning of the game, you may generate a horseman bystander. When Apocalypse crosses a starting line after resolutions, you may generate a horseman bystander. These are going to be popping up a lot. I'll read what they all do by the end. But uh, we're going to see Generate a Horseman Bystander quite a bit. They, you will get all four of them out throughout the game, I guarantee it. It is, uh, let's see, it is max one, but not like one per game. So No, yeah, if that, so if, if like War dies, dies, you can yeah. make War again. Yeah, that's pretty um, sweet. Actually, I'll, I'll give you a rundown, because I think maybe knowing what they do helps you kind of be there. So Death is Archangel. He is a 7 speed, 11 attack, 17 defense, 3 damage, with hypersonic speed, precision strike, invincible, and perplex. So, very solid. 11 for 3, little perplex, 5 range. Damon is a chick on horse, dude on horse, 4 range, triple target, elasticity, incapacitate, super senses, shape change, 8 speed, 9 attack, 18 defense, 2 damage. A little tough to put down there. And then we have to do pestilence. Another person on a horse here. We got charge, 10 speed, 10 attack, poison, 18 defense, combat reflexes, 2 damage without wit. And then your other big beefy attacker here is war with your running shot, pen blast, uh, 8 speed, 11 attack, 17 toughness, 3 damage exploit with 6 range. They can all fly. They're all very solid. Yeah. So that's for horse. That they can all fly is pretty, pretty decent. It's good. Yeah, it's really good. I like it a lot. So. That's what all the horsemen do, so keep that in mind. Little one-click dudes that you can spit out whenever it says generate a horseman. Uh, I feel like Angel, so death, making him first. A little perplex, a little uh, precision strike, a little hypersonic uh, speed, be the, invincible. The best one, right? Gotta be the auto make, right? Yeah. Or unless you like really want an outwit. An 11 for suppose. 3 with precision hypersonic. So good. Yeah, it's pretty good. Just so good. Um, and that way, you know, if you want to make a different horseman halfway through the game, think of, you know, think about that. Drop the poison one next to drop the plasticity one next to somebody, et cetera, et cetera. So we'll we'll get into these here. Yeah, um, I do always he love the created... outwit poison combo. Oh yeah, always good, always so good. And then that eighteen combat, every... you know, keep them in close, keep them there. I always like it. So traded, he has leadership, mastermind, and shape change, just flat out traded. Really good. When Apocalypse uses leadership and succeeds, you may instead generate a horseman bystander. When Apocalypse uses mastermind, friendly characters in range are considered to be adjacent. That's eight range that he has that he can mastermind to. So he's going to be making these bystanders easily throughout the game, but he can just mastermind to whatever. See you later. They'll come back. Don't worry. They'll be back. Halfway through his dial on click nine through 14 on his 18 click dial so 9 through 14 he has go forth my horseman a special speed power charge stealth and then power choose an effect place all horsemen bystanders adjacent to apocalypse or you guessed it generate a horseman bystander so that's halfway through his dial on click 9 through 14 for five clicks there Uh, sorry six clicks there he's got just power generate a horseman he's got a special defense on click six through ten five clicks here as only the strong survive. Combat reflex is an ESD. Once per turn, when Apocalypse uses Mastermind and chooses a horse and bystander, the chosen character may be given an action token instead of taking damage. Okay, so now you have Ding. all these clicks of his life where if those horsemen have no you know, action tokens on them, he can Mastermind to them twice in a turn, easy, and then third time turn, maybe kill them. And it's, I, it's not I even don't easy to like energy explode or dual no. target because... He can mastermind to somebody within range. Right. So, you know, death could be eight squares behind Apocalypse. So you shoot at Apocalypse and, like, maybe you target someone else. But there's yeah. very little chance you're shooting at Apocalypse and someone eight squares behind him at the same time. And, you know, keep in mind, he might have several of these bystanders out because he gets them for leadership. It's insane. And then also, he's ESD. 
lost combat reflexes when you're shooting him anyways. Past shape change. And he's got cosmic energy, so you can't outwit Mastermind. There's some fun ways you might be able to get around it, but I'm like, dude, I don't know how you put this guy down. It's insane. Um, and then his damage power that he has on a click 11 through 14 is empower enhancement and prop control. Pretty simple. His dial's weird and wacky for an old giant figure. You know, he's got the charge top dial. That's his only move and attack until he gets back to charge on click nine. So there's uh, five clicks of no move and attack there for a bit, followed by four clicks on the end of his dial with no move and attack either, which is a little rough. Never drops below three damage. He does drop to a nine attack in places. He actually doesn't have that high of an attack value. Honestly, uh, it quits being an 11 at click five and never jumps back up to an 11. So he's got really sad attack values, which maybe yeah, those horsemen are going to be pulling a lot more weight. Two. He's oh, yeah, no, click two is great. Yeah, when he's at 12. Five. Yeah, 13 yeah. for five damage is great. Um, that close combat expert being paired with his highest combat value is a little rough. He does get perplexed, though, later in the dial. Um, and then on his back end, he has four clicks of regeneration. Right now, my little my little pea brain is like, dude, can you just play this guy at 300 points and just point denial people? Is this is this meta? Is this is it too late at night? It's like 1030 right now, guys. So I don't know if we're recording this crazy <laughs> late. But right now, I'm like, man, mastermind like... is somebody eight squares away. Traded mastermind, traded shape change. How do you kill this guy? I'm just like, how does he die? You how can you with, do this? Yeah, you start with one of your... Um, or with a horseman. horseman. Every time you succeed at leadership, you get a horseman. And it's a five through six, and sure, there's no yeah. Uh, whatever Anytime you anymore. cross one of the starting lines, you get another horseman. And then when you hit click nine, okay, so, which is so let's say this around his like hundred point line, right? Well, play him. At, let's say play him at two hundred points. He starts with that special defense power, where he can mastermind to someone eight squares away, and he can just give a horseman by Sander an action token instead. So is that an unkillable 200 points right there? Unless it's um, a Sinister Six theme team to out with Mastermind or a whatever. Well, it's uh, not whatever, just these horsemen or something. that he can mastermind to. It's, he can mastermind to any friendly character. Right? Oh, right. Yeah. Any, any, well, uh, uh, if he chooses a horseman bystander, the chosen character may be given an action token. An action token. That's the um, action token thing. But he does have the um, traded Mastermind. And when yeah. he uses it, friendly characters within range are considered to be adjacent. So... So he does have oh, like, he can anyone. mastermind yeah. within range. If they happen to be a horseman and he happens to be on those special defense clicks, then it's the double like where they can take an action token instead of damage, which damn yeah. action token instead of damage. It's so it's so good because it's it's one token. If he has a ton of horsemen, he just keeps giving them tokens, right? Like, am I am I missing something? I a clear mean. next turn. I've got three more horsemen. You have to kill all my horsemen. Yeah, you're Which hoping maybe that he doesn't roll hard. leadership. You're hoping that he doesn't yeah. land on one, like his click nine where he can just power action, make one every turn. Uh, he's so got good. colossal size, so he's rolling a three through six for willpower. Yep. Um, yeah. I don't know, dude. He seems like stupid good. T- like, I wouldn't bring this to a casual night. I would never play 300 point apocalypse on a casual night. I would feel like oh, a jerk. No. This is... I, I don't know. I mean, maybe, we might do it as like a boss battle at some time. But yeah, a boss battle could be fun. I'll also say, um, just on paper, the uh, bystanders that he generates, almost better than the original 100-point um, horsemen. horsemen. Are they? Like, I have... like, they're based on. So they all have the transport team ability, which was essentially a worse version of hypersonic. So it was like hypersonic with a minus two attack. So they did have oh, the true, flight yeah. transporter team ability. Um, they did have 18s with Invuln, but mm. I mean, getting them for free, your opponent can't score points compared to these 100 point versions. They're essentially better stats other than like defense and better like yeah. speed powers, um, better rollouts on like certain ones and stuff. But no, this Apocalypse was originally 500 points, uh, one trait. No protected outwit. He did have powers and powers and combat abilities can't be countered and they can't be the target of incapacitate. Oh sure. Ooh. So kind of a protected oh, something or other back then. Yeah, can't in cap yeah. this guy. Um but yeah, after the Wonder Woman 80th rules changes and then like the other trait they gave him, and then the 
boost they gave to like his three special powers because they definitely increased the uh, the versatility on those special powers. I won't read off the old ones, but they right. definitely got boosted. This is this just seems awesome, and I I can see in certain games he doesn't reduce penetrating damage. You know, maybe you charge flurry, exploit him, hit him. Maybe he's got no horsemen. Maybe you can get the drop on this guy pretty early, but you let him ramp up, man. Unless you get the drop on this dude super early and get rid of his horsemen, this can be off to beat. Yeah. All right, that's that's enough apocalypse. I'm I'm done oogling over uh, this blue dude uh, for now. Anyways, sweet. Me and that, talk about you, that means I get to talk about apocalypse. So no. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this is main set, not legacy card. Uh, one of the chases in the set is Apocalypse with the Scarab Sword. So, of course, he has the optional plus five point trait, which is Sword Bearer. Um, for 195 points or 200 points with a sword, which you're always going to do. Let's not pretend you're not going to. Uh, this guy's got some really solid stats. I will say the 2x2 two two probably beats him 10 out of 10 times. But uh, we'll pretend for a second. So... This Apocalypse okay. has traded Super Senses, the Mask of Annihilation. On his first three clicks, Ooh. he has Shape Change, so he's got two rollouts. He's nine clicks long, and he gets very interesting bottom dial. So this is definitely a thing to keep your eye on if you're into bizarro dial games or like reverse dial games. Uh, starts with a 10-speed charge with 12 attack, Precision Strike, 19 defense with Invincible, and a 5 damage Shape Change. He goes on to a 4 damage on click 2. Everything else stays the same. And then on click 3, it's everything's the same except instead of Precision Strike, he gets There Must Be Suffering Before Victory, which is a special attack power. So it's free, make an attack, but only to target a character that targeted Apocalypse with an attack since your last turn. Doesn't matter if they hit, damaged, anything. Uh. If they targeted him, if they did Mind Control, if they did Incapacitate, if they did any of those things you get to make a free attack against them. And it doesn't say close or range. He has eight range, so very versatile on those clicks. On click four, he switches from his charge clicks to a running shot with that special attack power uh, for the next three clicks. So it's clicks four through six. He's got running shot with an 11 for four, uh, outwit that special attack power, and an 18 invuln. And then on click seven, he hits his first stop click uh, so it is summon the full might, our summon our full might. So stop. Apocalypse can't be damaged by opposing effects, healed, or chosen for mastermind. At the beginning of your turn, generate a daemon bystander in a square within six squares. At the end of your turn, deal Apocalypse one unavoidable damage. So <laughs> what a wacky, okay. wacky, like you hit him to this, and then you can then literally gonna... just run away. He's... He's gonna take care of himself. Well, I mean, yeah. he's got plasticity, he but will, so like, okay, he will die once you... he hits this click. It's guaranteed. <laughs> That's so I mean, funny. I don't think I've seen anything like this in Hero Clicks, though. Technically, that, that you is could hilarious. heal him off of this. He does have X Men team ability, so tech. Wait, uh, can't be he healed. Can't be healed or chosen for Mastermind. So, yeah. No, you can't heal him off. Yeah. Of this. So once yeah, he dude. hits this, he's locked in. He's it's, dying. It's countdown to death. He spits is, out a demon. It's so weird because he gets dies. these stupid high defense value so uh on click seven he's a 19 with that um stop click so again it's can't be damaged by opposing effects healed or chosen for mastermind so if he can't be damaged by opposing effects why has he even got a defense value yeah you should just give him a zero protected right? maybe they're just being uh, like nah my number go up or something it's so <laughs> awesome <laughs> i don't know i mean yeah He's not, yeah, yeah. I'm protected mind control, so people could mind control him and that could hurt you yeah. a lot. Really a hurt lot. your own team. They hit it. So he's yeah, a twelve yikes. for five on that first stop with his special attack power and exploit weakness. So uh, he's potentially making a free attack, most likely making a free attack when he first hits that. Uh, he does get plasticity from click seven through nine with an eight speed, and then on click eight. He goes to a 12 attack with penetrating psychic blast, still five damage exploit. So whether they're range or close, you're dealing pen damage now. Uh, he goes to a 20 with that stop click, which again, you can't be damaged by opposing effects. So 
other than like protected pulse wave and outwit, the stop click doesn't actually stop anything from clicking. Like you no. will just turn to this click because of his own well, stop click. It's kind of like the uh, they wanted to just put it all on that one first stop click, right? So right, yeah, it has they're to just going to keep over. using the text. Yeah, it, I mean it has to, but yeah, yeah, it's funny. yeah it has to. Um, and then click li- click nine. He goes to a thirteen attack with pen turning psychic blast. Uh, still eight speed plasticity, a twenty one defense. So really hope they don't hit you on click nine. Oh wait, can't be damaged by opposing effects. Uh, yeah. So it doesn't matter if they do, I guess. But yeah, thirteen for five with pensai and exploit weakness. Uh, what does the sword he comes with do? You say, well, scarab is gives you blade claws fangs. Uh, it's a ten point sword. Oh, what? Of course, no five points if he equips it. Uh, when this character uses it, increase the damage dealt by one for each four in the attack roll. Results can be greater than six. So if you roll an eight with your attack and it hits, and then you roll blades and it's a six, you deal eight damage. I well, mean, eight damage blades right it there. It is cool. It's not something it's I'm the... going to probably keep in my back pocket usually. Um, not unless That's I have just a little Don that... eight damage blades I'm pulling off, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, it it would be harder to pull off than a crit hit blades roll, to be honest. Uh, true, uh, true. It's two fours and a six instead of two six. Right. Uh, no, that's or basically maybe the same. same amount of difficulty. Yeah, yeah I would same, say. Yeah, actually, statistically, but same amount of difficulty, um, and then it's another damage. Ooh, yeah, Ooh. better than a crit hit. I mean, as long as yeah. you hit, that is. But yeah, right. He's a fun little chase. I really like him. I think he's going to be hard to deal with. And, oh, that's right. Um, make a Damon bystander. So I should probably tell you what the Damon Dude, bystanders same. look like. Are they the so exact same as the other ones? They are, Probably. yeah, they are the same as Annihilation, the chase that we pulled. So it is a charge 11 attack um, with Quake, 17 defense with Invincible, and 3 damage with Exploit. So if you watch our gameplay video, our Battle Royal, you'll see these guys in action. An 11 for 3 with Exploit for 0 points that just gets made every turn is really solid. Apocalypse doesn't make him every turn, but he does make one uh, for three turns when he hits his stop click. And man, those Damon bystanders can definitely do a lot of damage on their own. Like an 11 for three with exploit. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah, it cuts through quite a bit of stuff. Uh, You know, it doesn't cut through, though. Solemn. No, he does reduce penetrating damage. So, yeah, there won't be won't be cutting through much with Solemn here. Oh, this apocalypse is interesting. He's got a different uh, a different dial that I've ever seen. I think the only thing that hurts him is that you want to be in close on click seven, and, then, and people yes, are probably just going to shoot you to that range. click. Yeah, well, it so from charge to range, back to like yeah, where you want to be close. Yeah. Back to like you'd rather be close so they can't get away from you for the five damage exploit. I mean, shooting is still fine, but you they might run away from you if you're shooting. Um, I think it's rough. I think he, if he started with running shot and then went on to charge, I think everybody can kind of agree that you'd rather start with range than go to a uh, a close orientated dial. It would really help out. But uh, besides that, and it's such a wacky dial. I think this is a just a fun piece. Like I won't even feel bad. You know, oh, I my opponent's got this crazy beefy apocalypse, but he's like counting down to his own death. But he spawns these little minions. I'm like, am I am I sad that Apocalypse is slowly leaving me? No, I guess not. I'm getting really good like bystanders out of it at least, and he might be able to make some shots. Maybe if I TK him around, he can uh, he can shoot somebody or lock some people down, or he can just move. I you guess he can move him, like, too. Colossal on those clicks. Yeah, like I some. Mean, I don't know. I feel like I this is that, that not what he's sense. doing. Summon our full might. He's, is, is this what he does in the comic? He sacrifices himself. He slowly uh, dies to. Uh, Maybe. Imagining like his Just arm turns the, the into a demon demons. bystander and his legs turn into <laughs> demons, like he's like a reverse Voltroning like it a and bad it falls anime apart. Where, yeah, where the protagonist cuts or off like, an arm and it turns into you kill a, someone. A and it's like a bug now. Yeah, some weird like that, something goofy. Um, that's hilarious, dude. Oh my gosh. Uh, I'm gonna do a quick read here of the Wheel of Fortune uh, tarot yes. card. 
which, as we know, Wheel of Fortune, one of the, one of the best stands in JoJo. It's a, it's a car. Um, if you don't know, all these tarot cards are based off of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, uh, specifically Part 3, uh, all their stand names, and that's what tarot cards are referencing. They, they clearly took that from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, in case you didn't know. Yeah. Uh, anyways. Where's the Muhammad Avdal card? I know. Where's the Muhammad Avdal? Well, that's the Magician. Remember, that's the Magician card. card. Oh, that's true. Um, <laughs> that is his stand. For some okay. reason, they didn't call it Magician's Red. I don't know why. They just call it Magician. So strange to me. Uh, no, so Wheel of Fortune's a mission point card, and ho oh, baby, is it one heck of a mission point card. When a character attacks, that character's controller gains one mission point for each time the attack is re-rolled by an opposing effect. So, again, this is a card that affects both you and your opponent, but if your opponent isn't built for mission points, they, they probably just won't care. But if you are, which you should be if you're running this card, this is so, just such a icing on the cake for a mission point team the perplex the outwit the what and like those were yeah. all right but this one you're always making attacks simeon no am yeah. i wrong it's yeah. punishing your opponent either way it's are you gonna prob me and give me a mission point or are you gonna not prob me and yeah you're just gonna sit? take that hit are you gonna, just, gonna like, happen yeah just not use your probs or are you gonna use them and like potentially give me closer to mission winning point. by mission points mm, yes mission point victory so mm. this card will absolutely make every single mission point team that i build 100 um, percent. it's absolutely super fun like and it's not broken it's not like something exploitable uh it is when a character attacks that character's controller gains one mission so your opponent can also get mission points from this um obviously yeah. like, that's how most tarot cards work is like both ways but uh yeah you could potentially have multiple characters attack in a turn, and if your opponent wants to prob any of them, then they're going to give somebody a mission point. I can hurt. I can hurt a lot. Yeah. Um, what else do you want to talk about before we... I just remember we oh. have the World 2022 announcement that we need to go over, too. Yeah. Not crazy, but... I, I'll i read Mad Jim Jaspers real quick, and then Mad I, Jim. I do want to mention... Um, so we, we do have the Magneto legacy the unis the untouchable legacy uh, but more important to me is the white sword chase with his object so mad jim is pretty simple he's 35 points he's the super rare prime to arcade he has five range triple lightning bolt cosmic energy cosmic mystical politician and ruler real name sir james jaspers so Ooh, he's a sir yeah man <laughs> He's a lord in England. He we were, we were doing all this making fun of his name. We we didn't even know his full title. Yeah, Ooh, he's mad, sir. sir Jim Jaspers. Uh, wow, but pardon me. He has one big trait that is pretty much his whole deal. So full dial of phasing, which is four clicks. Uh, two clicks of incapacitate, followed by two clicks of pulse wave. That's two 12s and then two 11s, respectively. Uh, two clicks of 18 defense, followed by two clicks of 17 with his special shifting stalls super senses barrier barrier is free but only to generate two markers so he can do free as two and then also power action it's two separate lines of text there uh full dial of perplex the first two clicks are one damage and the second two are two damage uh, but the main reason anyone is even looking at this guy is he has the crooked market as a trait so free choose an equipment or sorry, choose an equipped friendly character within a range and line of fire, which is five, normally. Um, replace their equipped equipment with another equipment of equal or less points from your sideline. Replace their equipped equipment with another equipment of equal or less points from your sideline. I thought I might trip myself up if I said it really fast. Uh, okay. So yeah, it's free. If you have a friendly character that is equipped, you can choose another equipment of equal or less points on your sideline and swap it which is pretty cool for a free effect um, having some sort of sideline options to really hammer in the I don't know like if you have an agent Carter who's starting off with her shield and you're like no 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 I'd rather give her the Muramasa blade you know that is now doable <laughs> so like sure, all of yeah. those things everything is it's all it's all crazy now um, with this one guy, this one weird thing. But then even crazier than that is his second part of the trait, which is power. Once per game, choose a friendly character unequipped, or friendly unequipped character within a range and light of fire, and choose an equipment from your sideline. Equip the chosen character with the chosen equipment. 
it never says you pay the cost of the equipment for this. And it's just once per game. So, oh man, I can sideline like the all black necro sword that's 15 points, and then power once per game, choose a friendly character and auto equip them with this little 35 point guy. And then he still has perplex and he still has like the free swap stuff. So, he's still got like a ton of other utility, but man essentially like he's not really even a 35 point piece because you have to take into account the fact that he can sneak in whatever Free object he wants as like yeah. a power action so in like golden uh exospecs he's now a 23 point piece because he's giving you free exospecs to somebody uh um, right you know like all of the all of the equipment throughout the ages but uh He's really cool. He's a five Power point action. piece. I've just given somebody the uh, Infinity Gauntlet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, something I mean, like that. Truthfully, yeah, like there's no point cap on this, which is not wild. On the, to not me. on the power action. On the free on action, there one. is a choose a yeah. equipped friendly character within range and line of fire, and then their equipped equipment has to be equal or less oh. points than the one swapped. But the power action just says once per game. This is so. Wacky. If they're unequipped, <laughs> so you just wild. equip them with a sideline one. So yeah, um, it never says like what you can sideline or anything like that. So we are under the assumption that it is just any equipment that could be equipment. Uh, and yeah, there's some good stuff out there: goblin gliders and pumpkin bombs and oh, yeah. dimensional watches. You know, all the stuff that people normally reach for. No, uh, there's really this is the best of the best. <laughs> yeah, I just named off the most played things. But uh, the swap ability is really cool. The power action you can, is you can put the H dial on anyone you want, bro. The oh, H yeah. dial. Finally, give it to anyone. Yeah, you can put the H dial on and then power action to activate it the same turn. Yeah, in the same turn. That's actually not even bad. I said it as a joke, but that's actually <laughs> it's actually kind of good. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's not bad. It's not bad. Oh, it's the, solid. The it's coolest solid. thing is, uh, so, like, this is a single power action, so... Um, essentially, if you go second, rather than like the whole uh, I sidestep, carry back, power action to equip, or I TK to this character, power action to equip, you do one power action, and then that character is equipped, and now that character can use that equipment. So uh, let's say take it to like real scummy kind of like territory. Let's say I go second, my opponent like equips stuff. Uh, and it's Silver Age, so like they equip stuff, and then Magim Jaspers is on my team, and I power action give uh, Sky Tyrant the power gem, and then I send him across the like map the same turn because like Sky Tyrant didn't take the power action, Magim Jaspers did, so Sky Tyrant now has the power gem, and he can do his charge double flurry whatever kind of thing, um, or it's just flurry I guess, but whatever. Uh, same with like uh, Vulture, if that like were still a case, you'd be able to power action, equip oh, him, true. and then send him right. out the same exact turn that you equip him, uh, because the power action that is equipping them is going to match him, Jasper. It's, it's with no fear of someone stealing your equipment. Or yeah, no fear of it getting destroyed whatever. or yeah. someone stealing it. So like exo specs are perfectly coming safe right out of Magim Jasper's playing... pocket. He's like, "Here you go, buddy. Enjoy yeah. those. Enjoy and those then... Akans." It's not like he's useless besides, like, the equipment. He has, like, a free barrier and a normal barrier and then also a perplex. So he's doing Pretty other good. stuff, too. I'm probably never in-capping. Like, maybe it happens. Maybe it doesn't. Hey, but uh, Never say never. Yeah, his utility is very beginning of the game, kind of, like, ended. Uh, but I don't know, yeah. dude. That free action, halfway through the game, you're like, oh, I see the uh, the crew's really ganged up on you here. Well, uh... Here, five point shield, different five point shield. Oh, ESD, get that rid of that. Uh, combat reflexes. There you go. Don't say I never did anything for you there, Chief. Like, I don't know. He's hilarious. Like, does a lot. Yeah. Might he, get, you he know, really might get does. destroyed. He gets a little too close to the fray, but like, man, this is this is crazy for 35 points. This is this is prime worthy. Absolutely. 100%. Like, utility prime. Um, yeah. Nothing close to arcade, but. You know, it is a, a super solid prime. I really like this guy. Uh, I th obviously think he's going to be and potential I mean, for, like, competitive teams all the time because, I mean, the fact that I can, absolutely. like, beginning of, like, my very first turn before I do anything, 
I can power action and have somebody equipped already is just it's great action economy that turn and then it's also if I'm behind a turn for whatever reason like my opponent goes first and then I go second uh, I am now like equal to where my opponent went is whereas like I don't have an action token on my equipped character kind of thing um, yeah I think he's great I don't and like also just the the swap potential where if you have oh, yeah. a he's main insane. force object or you have people with swords or whatever and you're like Oh, like I have Wolverine with the uh, Muramasa blade, but you know what I could really use on this team is the emotional modifier. So I'm just going to go ahead and swap that blade out for a book, like, or whatever the heck the emotional modifier is. It's, it's like a control pad. It's not a book. All right. It's got yeah. buttons. It presses like, a, like you it's know, like a Kindle. Love, okay. It's like a fear book. Okay. On there. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Well, uh... <laughs> It's not like an ebook, bro. It's like a, it's like an iPad, but it was made in the eighties, so it was like before iPads even it's like existed, a big bro. Old button iPad, um, Here, but no, like eight, yeah, anything that allows you to switch up your team after engaging with like your opponent's team or switch up your team okay. like mid tournament or anything like okay. that, it's great. This guy's gonna be really, really solid. Um, quick rundown on the white sword, just because I think he's interesting. So he's the other chase that we saw. The other one with the sword has the sword bear trait, 75 points. Uh, resurrect my thralls each dawn twice per game. When a bystander is KO'd after resolutions, you may generate a copy of that bystander. That's really solid. Uh, more so if it's an opposing bystander, because white sword generates his own, and you don't really want a copy of one of those. Um, they're not bad, but you'd prefer like one of those daemons that Apocalypse makes or something. Or one of the horsemen that other Apocalypse makes. Uh, he has a special speed powers first he clicks that is charge flurry. When he uses charge and hits this turn, friendly bystanders can use charge, which is <laughs> real great. <laughs> real, real great. Uh, I just Giving... imagine the paparazzi just coming in all of oh, a sudden. I was thinking like they're, they're terrible. Silver but... Age with sure. like walking woods, and all of a sudden I have sidestep Ooh, charge. That flurry. would be so good. Oh my gosh. Nope. Yeah, I forget what I said. That's Their awesome. speed's still real slow, but like. Oh boy, <laughs> that's that's good. Uh, Coming to get you twice per game. He gets to like resurrect one of those walking yeah. woods if they get KO'd. Uh, he has a special attack power from click three to seven. I'm not getting into the rest of his dial, but from clicks three to seven, it is quake. When white sword hits more than one opposing character with a close attack after resolutions, heal two clicks on each adjacent friendly character. So not himself. Wow. But anyone next to him, he gets some defend and some other like uh, support powers, like empower and stuff. Starts with leadership, um, and then he has the purity blade. So purity is blades, claws, fangs, and this is equipable to anybody. But it, obviously, anyone with the sword bear trait can start with it. So blades, claws, fangs. When this character uses it, after resolutions, you may generate an Akara warrior bystander. So. Doesn't matter on your blades roll. Doesn't matter anything other than using blades, claws, fangs. Once you use it, you get to make a warrior bystander, a no, Okara warrior bystander, and uh, those Okara warrior bystanders are uh, eight speed, ten attack, seventeen defense, two damage, blank dials except for their attack power, which is precision strike. So eight, ten, for seventeen, sure. two. Obviously, with white uh, sword, you can potentially get a charge. Off. Yeah, they get yeah. charged later. But I mean, if you blade somebody, this, they're yeah. going to be dropped right next to someone. So they'll be right yeah. next to someone for a follow up attack, which is just solid. But yeah, yeah, and precision strike can still get through reducers and stuff. So yeah. um, if you have somebody that's really cool with like flurry or like I first thing I thought of when I saw this was like equipping it to Eddie Guerrero, so I could three amigos oh. <laughs> and pop out three okara warriors really i think that's that how that hilarious works. let's see um yeah blades claws when this character uses it yeah. after resolutions you may generate an okara gotta roll blades maybe that's yeah. it roll blades each time get through okara really warrior cool. bystanders but yeah um we're not I guess gonna go he into like down everything just enough else purity rings to make it into a sword that's a lot of purity rings to melt down <laughs> to make a purity sword that's <laughs> Pretty cool. All right, that's, that's my one joke. Sword. I do like, I do like the white sword though. I do think he's really actually like one of the coolest chases in this set. That's just really fun. As someone who likes bystanders, and I think a lot of people like bystanders, 
this is a must to like build a bystander team around and like mess around with it playing with yeah. some uh oh, say non-theme playing with the red ghost maybe some lex luther you know red sun and just, just what happens do some do some wacky bystander stuff it's awesome yeah throw in a red um, wing yeah throw in a red two wing. equipable bystander generators sure oh you're right it's magic jasper's generator. swapping between bystander generators sure Falcon, instead of making Red Wing, is making Okara Warriors? Why not? Make his Red Wing and then swap into the Okara Sword so he can make the Bystanders. Sure. Oh, geez. There you Why go. Not? Well, Why not? Making Bystanders isn't the only thing we're going to be making. We're going to be making a trip down to Memphis, Tennessee here, uh, September 15th through the 18th. WizKids has posted a Road to Worlds articles. Uh, after a two-year hiatus, they're very happy and excited to announce that 2022 World Championship for Heroclix and Dice Masters. Like I said, Thursday, September 18th through Sunday, September, sorry, Thursday, September 15th through Thursday, September 18th at the Graceland Exhibition Center, Memphis, Tennessee. Now, there's going to be the title for normal world champion, Heroclix Team World Champions. Players and attendees will also be able to purchase con-exclusive figures as well as play in Battle Royales, and there are going to be other side events to win con exclusive prizes. Simi and I know quite a bit about these other side events. Not a lot of people played in them. People were a little too busy with the main events, but if you can, I would say definitely do the side events. They are awesome and were really creative and fun last time. Um, so this is their second time going there. Events start at 2 p.m. on Thursday, so kind of a little half day on Thursday, and then they run through 2 p.m. on Sunday. So Sunday is kind of a wrap-up day, do some last-minute battle royals, finish up top 8, top 16, whatever, and then get the frick out of my hotel, get out of my building. Um, so, yeah, but they're going to run from, uh, let's see, until 10 p.m. on Thursday night, Friday night, and Saturday evenings, which I believe there's normally, it doesn't say what their start time is, on those days, but usually it's around 10 or so, was, like 10 a.m., 10 yeah, or 11, I right? It was nine. I think you might have been able to go into the convention at nine. nine. Uh, oh, I okay. There sleeping until like eight, and then by the time I got ready and walked over there, people were already like in lines and stuff. So I think it was nine. So we don't have uh, much else around the what events are happening, but we do have the uh, hotel room block here. So for those traveling to the event, we're happy to offer a special room block at the guest house at Graceland, available for the night September 15th through September 18th. So I that's highly, highly September. recommend it because, yeah. um, well, you'll get to it, but I, I believe it. They say 150 a night or something along those lines. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be 152 bucks a night. Yeah, There's up to four guests per room. So um, yeah, 150 split four ways per night is probably cheaper than most Airbnbs. And yeah, then it's a good yeah, call. There's an additional accommodation that they add in there. So uh, this room block is available for a limited time for first come first serve basis. Only one room in the room block can be preserved per a registrant. All right. There's no one dude making a bunch of different of your rooms. Okay. If you have a ton of people, uh, there's a two night minimum, however, so you have to at least be in there for at least two nights. Additionally, there is an extra package and it's only available to guests who register at the guest house WizKids World Championship room block for registered guests. So this is a this is a add-on thing. All right, it's going to cost uh, $49 per person. This is an add-on. I think it's worth it. It sounds super worth it to me. Uh, so the package includes, if you guys have time for this, I guess, an Elvis Experience tour ticket, which includes a self-guided tour of Graceland Mansion, the museums, and exhibits at Elvis Presley's Memphis, uh, including their new Elvis Dress to Rock jumpsuit exhibit. Oh, I didn't even realize that the first time I read it. Jumpsuit exhibit. That's kind of awesome. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Uh, and Elvis's airplanes. So that's really sweet. Uh, and then you're also going to get one of the Punisher Dark Reign, one of the Ares Con exclusive, one of the uh, WizKids Krampus Holiday Convention exclusives, is... and then one random convention exclusive figure. So you're guaranteed a uh, Punisher, Ares, and Krampus. Man, I didn't realize yeah, Krampus, Krampus is the first time I read this field. either. The first time um, I read it, hilarious. I was like, really? Like, Krampus is, I mean, let me look him up, because... Krampus he's old, is fairly he's old. Pre twenty sixteen, like he's See. golden age for hundred um, uh, percent. I don't even know if they have a date listed on here for him. Got to be like 2013, 2015. Uh, the first there. comment on HC Realms was August twenty fourteen. So that might have been the first time he was previewed, or it might have just been oh. when he was released around then, that time, though. 
you're just going to get another free random convention exclusive, which could be anything. But then you get a free entry into a Heroclix Battle Royale. So think realist back. So for 50 bucks, this is like easily worth more than 50 bucks. A free entry to a Battle Royale is like whatever, 20, 17 bucks, whatever that is, right? And then free Punisher Dark Reign, Ares, the Krampus. That Krampus could still go for like 40 bucks. I was going like, to say, it that's what I was going to say. Is like amount. my initial reaction was like, oh, Krampus is like really old. That's kind of weird. But after thinking about it for a second, uh, yeah, he still goes for quite a bit of money. Amount, it's man. it's a weird. really fun sculpt, too. So just like keeping it for yourself is perfectly like logical because it's he's got like two terrified kids in his little satchel and stuff. Yeah, it's really but, creepy. Uh, no, like as far as um, let me see if I can find what like one recently sold for. Let's see, one in box. He's trendy. He's going for on average around thirty bucks. One went. Man, for I, 30, I might have to sell my Krampus 20. before there's an influx of Krampuses. Yeah, yeah, it's, man. Wait, um, hang on here. This this says WizKids Krampus 2021. Oh, is that the this the one a, they gave out last year? That's that little miniature. That's not the. I was gonna say figure? this might not be the hero. It's not even the hero. This might Krampus. be. Oh, because that would make more sense. So the Heroclix Krampus uh, is also a convention exclusive, but that's, oh, this the, one... that's the one that has like the children in the bag. Um, right. This is like the D and D style. I think what you're looking at is probably the D and D one because the post does say it's a Heroclix figure. Oh, okay. But thank goodness, you guys. Don't worry, guys. You're not getting a say, random. I would actually D&D be one. happy with both. Uh, <laughs> the only, both be great. The only difference is the 2021 promotional figure um krampus looks way goofier with like a huge tongue and then the child that he's kidnapping is like not scared he's just like i, I don't know like he's whatever like, he's kind of like bored he's like man he's like upset krampus doesn't that have any games on his wasted phone. some of his time yeah he's like really sassy about yeah you're not having any games oh, yeah. on your phone he's like are we even there yet I haven't had oh. any food in like the last five minutes. I need my Anyways, fruit gushers. Uh, up to four people per room can grab this. Obviously, it's four person per room. And yeah, uh, there's some more information about numbers you can call. We'll have a link in the podcast description for all this, but it's shared on our Facebook and Twitter, I believe. But as far as more fun stuff, they go on to say the fan appreciation event. So fan appreciation is typically a slide slideshow, excuse me, of to sets, dials, figures, um, upcoming releases that are going to be coming out. And Scott usually hosts this. He flips through it. There's some Dice Master stuff in there, too. I know we're here with podcast. don't really care about Dice Masters. But there's usually a majority of, like, Heroclix stuff. They'll do, like, trivia and some random stuff. You might be able to get some some games for free, like I was able to. Won't go into that. But, you know, you never, you never know if the amount of cats you own. Uh, will actually help you in the future. But anyways, that's going to be 8 p.m. on Friday, sure September 16th, thing. in the Graceland Exhibit Exhibit Center. Get a sneak peek of what's coming for late 2022. So that's like Avengers Forever and then the Batman team-up set. Then they say early 2023, which we don't know anything that's happening in early 2023. So that could be really cool. Uh, for Heroclix Dice Manners, Masters, and other exciting WizKids games and products, as well as a chance to win some prizes. Kind of like I said, they do trivia, they do... Raise your hand for X. They have some travel planning notes. They kind of talk about parking. They talk about on-site food, uh, different places you can get to eat. They talk about their uh, health and safety and all this stuff. They, once again, the attire, you uh, cannot, you have to request that the name, image, and likeness of Elvis Presley not be used without express permission from Graceland. Uh, and improper references pertaining to Elvis are not allowed on Graceland property. Obviously, this is, uh, I think, owned by his family. This is Elvis is Graceland. You kind of got to be respectful of the person it's named after. And also, I mean, yo, dude, it's King of Rock. So show some freaking respect. You know what I mean? Uh, they do say this cool thing at the end here. They say, leave your mark. Bring a Sharpie. You can sign the famous Graceland wall. So that's cool. Got to sign the dial for Hero Clicks Graceland wall. Um, but yeah, and then there's more tips for visiting Graceland and stuff they get into. But not a lot of this um, is super pertaining. Uh, they do say to do for covid this is like potential for anybody wondering you don't have to wear a mask if you don't want to but if you do want to wear a mask you're more than welcome to which is cool 
uh, for COVID vaccination status and mask use. We're going to be using basically CDC and Shelby County, Tennessee Health Department guidelines. There's currently no requirements in place for requiring vaccinations or using a mask at the event. So don't worry about it. If you don't want to worry about those things, you are good to go. So I think that's basically all they have. They don't have a full schedule besides roughly what they're doing each day. And then, of course, the appreciation at 8 o'clock. So this is some good information for those worried about the hotels. You can get your hotel room booked now. You know when you can check in. You know the minimum amount of rooms that you have to buy in order to qualify for the hotel deal. Bada bing, bada boom. Hopefully those people that were looking for that information are now satisfied. And you know, you have a sweet, sweet deal uh, for 50 bucks that just instantly pays for itself uh, to get some uh, to get some hero hooks and entry to the Battle Royale. So that is the Road to Worlds. I'm excited. Um, we are less than two months away, around right at two months away, um, two months away, minus six days, I guess, 21st from recording this. So man, it's coming up. It's really coming up. I'm so pumped for worlds. I can't wait. Hopefully this really helps everybody get their travel plans in order, but that is it for news this week, guys. What an awesome week. Lots of stuff going on. 10 of swords just needs to, uh, needs to be here already. I want to, I want to play these figures. I really... I didn't think I was going to enjoy the set. I'm enjoying it. And Worlds, Worlds also needs to be here already. I can't wait. Can't wait to see everybody again. Can't wait to see everybody at Worlds. Have a good time. But Simeon, we did some digging. We, we were following some some frayed clothing. There were some threads out there. So oh, we're going to yeah. go take a look at this. Our dead redemption. Friend, I just wanted to play. Now, firstly, we ain't friends. Don't make no mistake on that subject. Now, secondly, he can't hardly see, let alone reason. Reasoning ain't never been one of my strong points neither, but C and I do just fine. So these, these kind of have dark and light tones for them, listener slash viewer, if you're on YouTube. Uh, this first thread, and this is HC Realms. You already know, get your muck boots on, Simeon. You're going to have to walk through yeah. some. There's some, <laughs> some. We call these oof. threads, but man. It's, uh, if you made clothes yeah, out of these, rough. they'd be some cursed clothing. This would be like some... It's very cursed. Put a person in a coma for years kind of clothing. It's like itching powder, but made out of... Get ready threads. for lots of wild hot takes and assumptions, because <laughs> that's what we got, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first thread is by Nelgor. Nel- Nelgor. I don't know. It's a weird name. Doesn't even have a profile picture. But join date is 2010 of December. Maybe, maybe trust this person. Name of the thread is "What Killed Hero Clicks." So there's a assumption number one. Um, but okay, I'll just read the base post, and we'll we'll go into some of the comments here. Uh, seriously, what killed Hero Clicks? I used to play at four to five different stores. One place I judge at could hold 30, 30 players, and this is the second time this month I had to cancel. It is that low interest. Even the store owner isn't that interested in Ten of Swords, because why worry about the four max players for Hero Clicks when Magic brings in 30 people with standing room out the door? So seriously, what happened? Was it COVID? Was it price increase? Was it terrible new rules? Was it reuse of characters? I remember when Great Lakes Avengers and Captain America was a big deal. So what happened? This is a serious article. I'm, I'm this sorry. This is but a it's, serious article. Yeah. Okay. I As I roll my eyes. Seriously. This person doesn't say where exactly do they? I'm curious uh, where they're from. Yeah, and they what don't say where exactly their at. venue is or anything. But to go along with it, like, used to have 30. Uh, not, like, that's really impressive. If you could get yeah. 30 people for a casual awesome. night, that is nuts. Um, even by, like, War of Light standards, like, 30 is a lot. Like, if we had gotten 30 in, like, one night for War of Light, we would not have had enough product for everyone. Um, oh. And, like, obviously it's cut down. I will say, in my opinion, number one is, yeah, a lot of venues shut down for almost two full years, and organized play was shut down for two whole years, and that killed interest for a lot of people. Or those people found, like, other hobbies, or, you know, they just haven't come quite back full circle to hero clicks again. So it doesn't mean that they're completely gone, but there's not back in the swing of things. Like at, in my personal venues, we've only been back around for about six or seven months now. So there's still like people that were playing beforehand that aren't playing again. And I'm assuming, hoping that they'll come back, but our numbers have like 
basically leveled back out to where they were. Um, his other reasonings just don't quite add up for me. So, so was it like price one increase? I want to say really quickly. No. Um, uh, no, go ahead on the price increase one. Mine's the one after it. So, oh, uh, yeah, I was just going to say it's it's not price increase. Like my thing with organized plays, you can literally keep playing the same figures that you've owned for the last 10, 15, however long you can play those every single week and uh, you can encourage your judge to do like golden age old only like all figures must be X years old kind of thing. If that's the only way you play, you can always like promote that and just yep. not keep buying new figures. Obviously most collectors, even people that don't play and they only collect, they'll keep buying them. Uh, competitive players will always keep buying them. People that just really like the game and have disposable income will keep buying them. So yep. if your barrier to entry for the game is the price increase and like the price per booster, you can one, wait till figures drop to like next to nothing, which you know happens a few months after they're out yeah, for some of them like you know in a year's time most disney plus figures you'll be able to pick yeah. up for pretty much nothing you'll be able to like get a full able cur for the cost of like a away. booster um, yeah was it terrible new rules well no also really quickly they're not new anymore people need to, no, need to yeah, cut this out this it's been over a year over a year ago these yeah. are just the rules of the game sorry classic clicks on reddit and anybody else that says new rules and all this other stuff this is how the game is played get with the times old man this is <laughs> this is the way the game is played now period Simi and I did a great thing by integrating the rules as they came out and got us used to them. And I, I love the rules. I don't want to go yeah. back. Frankly, we I were don't. heavily skeptical when the articles first come, oh, yeah. came out. Like I kind of bashed on a lot of like their reasonings oh. for changing and stuff. So did I. Didn't think so that did they I. knew what they were talking about. After playing with the new rules and getting rid of like pushing damage, like I still wish, you know, knockback damage was a thing, but I understand that like four new players to be able to easily get into this game changes definitely needed to be made. There was too yeah. many like working gears in this game where it's like, Oh, well you actually rolled two fours and like the new player says, well, like, what does that mean? Like, Oh, well doubles means knockback. Well, okay. What's, what's knockback? Well, how much damage did you do? Oh, you did four. So I get knocked back four squares. Well, first I have to check if I had, you know, charge or combat reflexes. Did I fall off of elevated? Did I hit a wall? Like these are all things that we don't have to ask anymore. Right. Now do I miss Way some easier. of that stuff? Way more yes. streamlined. Because I, I'm a person that's been playing the game for over seven years. So I was used to it. So the level of knowledge I had already achieved. So like I knowledge. my my level of knowledge, knowledge had been peaked. Okay. But no, like as far as like if I put myself in the shoes of a newer player, just completely disregarding all that entire conversation is so much easier. It's like, oh, you knocked me back. Knockback is three squares. End of discussion. You don't have to like go into like, well, knockback used to mean that like you might hit a wall and deal an extra damage, but only if you didn't have a reducer. A lot of stuff that like just doesn't need to be discussed anymore. Terrible new rules. I disagree. Most of the new rules, most of the new PAC, I'm fine with. Uh, there's still like a few powers in there that need to be changed or tweaked. Obviously. But other than that, yeah, I think they did a fine job, and I think it's way more accessible to newer players. And if that means that some of the older players no longer play, well, those people probably weren't the best people to have in the community if they're going to quit over a few quick changes, kind of thing. Honestly, if you're gonna if you're gonna quit playing a game and completely like, throw away like your community and stuff because pushing damage or something. I don't think you were super invested in the first place. Like I, that's probably a hot take that a few people might take offense to. But to be honest, that's how yeah. I feel. Like if you were willing to just disregard hero clicks and toss it away because you're like knockback damage is necessary or like pushing damage is necessary, I'm willing to just no longer hang out with my friends and like the people that I've been hanging out with for years because I don't like these rules. That's not really a great attitude like calder yeah. said change or die like and if dying means like quitting the game <laughs> not in like the literal sense was it reuse of characters they go on to say 
I remember when Great Lakes Avengers and Captain America was a big deal, question mark. Yeah, I remember when REV reused the same character three times in every set since Heroclix started. So what does it mean by reuse of characters? Please explain to me reuse of characters when we literally had sets that had three versions of the same character every single set for the first six, seven, eight years, whatever it was. I I don't know what that means. Reuse of characters. Are you talking about reuse of sculpts? Are you talking about like how Batman's in every DC set, how Superman's in every DC set? I I don't know what that means. Um, But no, I highly doubt that them pushing popular characters is what is hurting the game. If that's what your like intention of that question is, that's just a, I feel like this person got to like the end, like, you know, they're like, COVID, price increase, terrible new rules. And they're like, ah, I've, I've got to really round out these questions. Uh, reuse of characters? I I don't know. That one just doesn't make sense on two fronts. Number one, uh, newer players are always going to want to reach for like characters that are more popular. So it always makes sense for them to sneak a few in. And if that character is like, always Batman being in a DC set, that's something as like a veteran player you're just going to have to deal with like you're just going to have to like you know wipe your tears and just accept that Batman will be in every DC set that Captain yeah. America might be in every Marvel set that Wolverine will be in every X-Men set like these are just facts of this game like these are characters that are so ubiquitous to their titles that it just makes sense to always have one appear does that mean that I don't want unclicks characters or I want like Batman to take the slot of like a red Robin or a Nightwing or I don't know, armless tiger man, whatever. That's such a weird point to say like that could be something that could kill the game. Uh, yeah. So this is a serious article. Calder, do you have any Allegedly. serious responses to this uh, that you want to read off? You know, they, there's a few. I, I like Saturn flight here. Uh, saying about how HC Realms is dying, which I think is actually correct. Um, HC Realms is full of old, bitter people like the ones on this thread that just don't foster a great... That's not what Saturn Flight says. Um, but in my opinion, yeah, I'll, I'll agree with like HC Realms itself like dying. I think uh, these types HC of Realms, websites... Yeah, these old... It's, it's, it's just an old HC website. Realms, but this, uh, this no. site is almost 20 years old. It's like yeah. close to 20 years old and it shows like forum yeah, websites really and forum posts are so dated. Like I remember yeah. looking through forums when I was in middle school and like looking up Bigfoot facts and like <laughs> UFO sightings <laughs> and it would be like, here's, okay. here's what muscle and hey. fitness has to say about Bigfoot. And it'd be oh, like so people on the it's muscle like... and fitness fitness forums being like, oh. Yeah, I was camping the other weekend, and I saw these huge tracks, and there's no way a man could have made them, so it had to have been a Bigfoot, and something smelled really bad in the area. And it's like, as a child, I thought this was cool. But fast forward, like, 20 years later almost. And that's another thing. HC Realms used to have that. HC Realms did used to have, like, a really deep community. To be fair, when I got on HC Realms, all I cared about was, like, there was a few articles they would post that were neat, and then I would go to like the unit section or creative corner, and that was it. And now, still just go to the unit section. I'm not nostalgic for any of that other stuff, but HC Realms used to have weird off topic things where Heroclix players could then talk about those random weird things, which is neat. That's cool. Um, I'm not going to get too much into it, but yeah, I mean, Saturn Flight's right. Like, HC Realms is an old website it's dying. The idea of forums are dying. Hopefully then, you know, Facebook has kind of become where there's a lot of hero clicks content. It's kind of, I don't like discord because hero clicks is spread across multiple discords. There's not really a good one discord to be in. Um, no. I don't really, I don't like discord for the hero. I would say community it would be personally. awful if there was like one discord with all hero clicks. Oh, it be would honest. be, it would be horrible. I would hate it. Um, so I think Facebook groups is like solid and there's like, you know, the three, four Facebook groups that are like have most hero clicks players. We need to quit making extra ones. We don't need a hero clicks hub. No offense. We already have HIE or hero clicks players collections around the world. Let's not keep making all these random one off ones. It's weird. But uh nah, Saturn Flight Bruce, us. 
How about how about we yeah, don't some random weird ones this like just toy stop this store that closed just down like join... years ago? How about we don't name yeah Hero Clicks Facebook page after that? Yeah, after a dead toy store, <laughs> it's weird. Jeez. Um, I I will kind of agree. Like once again, it does suck when like boosters cost like bucks when you're used to buying them for like twelve, fifteen or whatever. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, you know, I also got mad wait, when my hot dog went up in price from a nickel to two dollars. Right, that's like I'm a that's inflation crazy that's old happening. boomer that gets you know? angry about normal price I mean, increases over time. What was it like? Uh, you know, when I was a kid, I could buy a Marvel Legend ten bucks. Now they're like twenty two, twenty three bucks. It is what it is. But guess what? I have more money than I did when I was a kid. You know, I can I can put in more. Uh, Disposable income to hero yeah. clicks. So I'm not, I'm not have crazy. More money than when I was a kid. I saw a yeah, kid walking true. around that's the other true. day with a Game Boy. When did that happen? Someone, someone bought it. Come on. Like, that was a present. I don't think that kid bought his own game. That'd be oh, ridiculous. Okay. Um, uh, Satterfly kind of goes into uh, the pandemic's rough. I will say, while I was on vacation with my family, I try to visit, you know, whatever. We go on vacation every year for Christmas. And I went to a comic book store and I talked to the guy about like Hero Clicks and it, it had died there. I think Hero Clicks is is dying in certain scenes because people don't know how to foster and grow a community and people don't know how to be real people, understanding people. And I think those people are the ones being the most vocal about it and then making this thread. Because what this guy was talking to me about his community, he was telling me about how some dude played some jank and just made everybody mad at him. And I uh, killed the scene. You know, he was always playing too seriously every time. You know, he was always run. I don't know what his team was, but it was literally some combo from Guardians of the Galaxy. And I'm just like, was that even good back then? You know, I'm like, uh, sure, dude. You know, and, and he was like, you know, just complaining and complaining and complaining about it. And I'm just like, you know, well, tell that dude to play something else. Be a human being with him. Be like, hey, look you're not fun to play against. Like, that's a tough conversation for someone to have. But if it's between one person being a stinker and killing the community or losing that one guy and keeping the rest of the community, I'm, I'm okay with cutting off that hand to save, like, the whole. You know what I mean? Like, and that's that's just, like, one facet where I went and talked to someone that owned a store and said, like, oh, their community was dead or whatever. But he talked about it like the game was dead. I'm like, well, it's dead in this area. But for me, you know, I got handful of venues within a few hours of me that all seem to be doing fairly well that all pull a decent amount of players you know it's uh it's weird i think again this is a silent majority thing i think hero clicks probably isn't as big as it used to be i think if you look at uh metrics that i'm used to judging by is like video views on youtube you know like a skit video made like 10 years ago has like 9,000 views on it. And sure, it's old. Maybe it's got a, a bunch of rewatches, but it's got like 9,000 views. And, you know, in the last two years, Simi and I have made more hilarious, like way better quality skit videos than this one ever was. And they haven't gotten over a thousand views. You know what I mean? So I think with that, yeah, the hero host player base is probably smaller than then. Or maybe that dude just jumped on a trend. I don't know. But I, feel uh, like, I don't. I don't think we're so, like dying. I don't think it's as prosperous I think as it it's once was. Really hard but I don't know to like I... actually tell because a huge portion of this community, and I think so many people misunderestimate the amount of people that buy Hero Clicks, never look up Facebook groups, never look up like HC Realms. Right. There's little, literally people that I've seen that have said, "I've been playing this game for years. Is there a way that like I can check or like?" calculate like my collection or whatever and people be like oh hd realms and that person will be like oh wow thanks it's like people that have been playing for two years and have never heard of hd realms is wild to me but there's this huge segment of hero clicks player community where yeah. they might never go on to like the facebook groups they might buy like stuff off ebay they might sell on ebay uh, but they don't like participate in the community as a whole they just play for fun, like at their tabletop with like maybe their kids or like maybe they're like close friends or whatever. And that's it. And like they don't buy it. Like, you know, they don't. Um, pro oh, I don't know. Maybe they buy a bunch of hero clicks. Maybe no, they, they don't. Do. But like, seriously, I think tabletop, like tabletop, we're all tabletop players, like kitchen table players. 
they are like the bread and butter to me of hero clicks. I hear, I see tons of people buy like tons of hero clicks and have massive collections. Never go to stores, never oh, do yeah. competitive play, never do anything. There's I feel like guy, the majority of um, those kid sales has to be dudes that just are casually playing it with their friends, their sons, daughters, whatever, family. Crazy. And it kind of goes to this uh, old Sean comment here. It's very short. But it's if you don't have competitive play, games die, period. Yeah. This is so wrong on just so many thousands of levels. Completely off base. Actually, yeah. like, to take that further, and I, I wish we had Alex on um, just to like help me with this one point, but the Magic community's like competitive scene is struggling super hard. But you know what's not struggling? Is there more casual scenes and there are more casual formats? Because those people know how to like play they they just play for fun but like their competitive scene is struggling really hard currently because like they've had an influx of like you know real shake up kind of things uh meanwhile like the commander format and like the other like more casual formats that they play in magic haven't had any issues because they don't play with that stuff and so it's like hero clicks casually will always be an easier community to build than a competitive one because you can literally just set the rules and the tone to whatever you want. You can be like, we don't play with that. We, you know, you know whatever. Is Until like a thousand times better casually. In in my humble opinion, I would yeah. say playing competitively every week burns people out way more than playing casually every week. You know, yeah. with, an, with an occasional 300 modern thrown in. And there's nothing wrong yeah. if you like if you start getting more competitive and you just like really want to lean heavy into that. That's fine, but as far as like community building, you have to start with the casual because that's where like the majority of your players are going to be. How many people that you've ever played D and D with are like meta gamer competitive like D and D players, like people that really want to break the game and like stretch it to its max? How many people are just wanting to unwind and just have a nice, fun, casual night? and just enjoy themselves and not worry about stuff. Because 90% of the people that I've played with, and like my more casual venues, well, all my venues have been casual, uh, but 90% of the people I've ever played with, they're just there to unwind and like have a chat and like talk about figures they like and have a fun game. They're not there to be like, yeah, I'm preparing for worlds and I, I really want to hone in this Blackheart team and... I'm going to try and hit you 12 times before you even blink. Nobody thinks like that here. I just, I'm just glad about that. Um, I think the only comment that I really need to read from this thread, because I, I think we've done this thread enough justice. I think there's we've, yeah. some real hot takes. If you want to read through here and there's some like good points. Um, a lot of people have their head in like the right spot where they're like, Hey, like a lot of weird stuff happened in the last couple of years probably just a lot of people that like maybe they lost their job maybe they like don't have the disposable income maybe they just don't feel like being in a crowded room with stinky people anymore um but i think this this comment here uh it's a response to uh no name who said hero clicks is almost entirely limited to niche hobby shops where it's really hard to catch the eye of new people who might find the game like this interesting um and the response is This is further compounded by the lack of advertising materials for the game. When I walk into my FLGS, I see posters and banners and cardboard stand-ups for Magic, D&D, Warhammer, etc. The number of times I saw anything advertising clicks can be counted on one hand. Uh, That comment, of course, from a certain mutant head crab... (laughs) No, what? Yes, he lives. Oh, Mutant Head Crab lives. He's back. <laughs> yeah, he's oh, still I'm still posting. happy he keeps still... his usernames consistent. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> uh, you know what's crazy is uh, prior to this, one of his most recent comments. So he he went on like a little binge here in July, uh, oh, four man. whole comments in July. But prior to that, his last comment was in January of 2022 on the WWE Wave 2 dial in evidence thread. Of course he did. Yeah. The uh what do you have to say there? What will Mage oh, C have was, to say? It was standing that dude. like really just nothing interesting. Okay. It was like something about Hanna Barbera clicks at uh, whatever. Yeah, something uh, lame. I could have sworn it would it was just an announcement from WizKids 
in general got the license with like transformers and my little pony or something like that yeah not not anything interesting in that response it was just you know he's he's a lurker He's always lurking, waiting to strike. I will say, man, I I feel like if I'm going to pick a villain from this thread, it's old Hester 56. Oh, Hester's a bit of a villain. Old Hester. I really love how Hester has like two quotes that, you know, he's one of those people that has a signature at the end of his text messages. So his, he's got two quotes that, uh, both like like one says Hester is right, and the other one says Hester is at least four point three times funnier than Haven. It's like he's had those quotes attached for years now. It's like right. man, you really like this is like one of those people you like pat on the head, and he just remembers that for the rest of his life. I guess this is some like peaked in high school energy right here. Yeah. Hester's got. I will Remember say like, his, that, his hot takes bring... pretty bad on this one. Sometimes oh, I like what he says, but. Uh, yeah. You know, Simeon, to to get the light a little brighter in here. A killed Hero Clicks guy. Come on, get over that. What's gonna save Hero Clicks? What will thankfully, save Hero Clicks? Thankfully, Hester fifty six has this thread. Yeah. So he's back at it, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh okay. what are some hot Hot ideas, hot off the presses of HC Realms. These ideas will not be as aged as HC Realms. Clearly not ideas that are 20 years no. old. Uh, let's let's see some of the thoughts to save Heroclix. Uh, one, okay. lock in four sets per year, two Marvel and two DC. Cut back to four-figure boosters and drop the per-booster price. Comic book-based marketing and ads. An official forum on the WizKids site. I'd miss you all, and maybe we'd all migrate back. Uh, mail in bonuses again. Oh, I see. Um, all these ideas are whiz kids twenty years ago. Yeah, these are just ancient. So these are this is literally like, what if Heroclix was just the Heroclix from two thousand and two or two thousand and five, or like comic book based marketing and ads is super old that's a thing that they used to do yeah. four figure boosters is something they used to do with yeah they they were cheaper back then just because of that's how inflation and life works um lock in four sets per year seems that seems low to me it doesn't seem like like four sets seems like it'd be plenty in a year one per quarter um but again like if WizKids could lock in two dc sets a year They'd be doing it. If WizKids could do five DC sets a year, they'd be doing it. Like, there's a reason why WizKids can only release one DC set a year. It's not like they hate making money. WizKids <laughs> likes making money. It's a business. They know DC sets sell. Uh, it's not like they're, it's artificial, whatever, scarcity. Yeah. It's not like it's like it's artificial scarcity, scarcity sure. of DC sets that WizKids is creating. They would love to make more DC sets. Yeah, it's, I, it's I, I don't know this. Like, no one from WizKids has ever told me this, but it's pretty painfully obvious that like, DC is hard for people to work with. Just look at oh, like yeah. the uh, like the figure lines and like stuff like that. DC is not great to work with when it comes to like artist interpretations and stuff, yep. uh, especially when are it comes you, to game licensing. When's the last? Are you a hero DC? player that constantly complains that all we get is Superman, Batman, Harley Quinn, and Wonder Woman? Well, look at every DC action figure line you know who we get like three yeah. times a year superman batman joker harley quinn wonder woman the only reason we get any more diverse stuff is because todd mcfarlane an artist has his own action figure company who guess what still just makes a bunch of batman figures too <laughs> so even dc themselves yeah it's like oh well oh, we you want the yokai we'll art something. well here's samurai yeah. batman exactly that's what they do it's like ah, uh, here's a uh, here's Luchador, Batman, and Superman. It's like, awesome, cool, yeah. thanks. Uh, could Ronan, I get a Green Lantern Superman. besides Hal Jordan, please? No, only Hal Jordan Green Lantern and John Stewart Green Lantern. You will get no other Green Lantern action ever. Don't even ask. Oh, okay, sorry, my bad. My bad, DC. About like a That's fridge magnet DC. of Kyle Rayner. Oh, my <laughs> Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's so good. Uh... So good. <laughs> oh, I love that. No, but like, you, all That's you have hilarious. to do is look at like the... Like look at video game tie-ins. There's there's like the Arkham oh, yeah. City series. There's very few like that. There's been a 
like one or two Superman titles and then look at like how many Marvel has. There was one for like every Spider-Man movie. Uh one for like the I mean not considering Lego stuff, but there's you know Wolverine Origins. There was multiple spin-offs of like the X-Men stuff. There was uh Marvel vs. Capcom, you know. They I guess DC got just Injustice League or not Injustice League. Uh was it just Injustice? Injustice, yeah. yeah just injustice. Like that that weird fighting game. Um It sucked. Yeah. The mobile, the mobile ones. They also got it. the uh the tie in with Mortal Kombat that made both games somehow worse. Um Right. But yeah, like but DC it's, does it's not get a ton of games. Marvel has a, a absolute ton of superhero games. Like even like the no. mobile ones. Like and the terrible, terrible the, mobile games. They've got so many terrible more for Marvel. But yeah, that's that's no joke. And and even though it hasn't been totally at the forefront, you know, Marvel hasn't been stressing making games. Um, or like D it seems like there was a period where there was like, yeah, we gotta make video games. And now it's like all the movies are sort of doing their thing. Cause like for a while there, Marvel would make a video game for every movie that came out. But like after like Avengers 2012, they just didn't make any more movie video games. I'm like, Oh, well, okay then. Cause there's like a bad captain America game. There's like Iron Man one, Iron Man two have like oh, those man. terrible like DS games, you that know, Iron, that first Iron Man game. I didn't play it. I only played Iron Man 2. Iron Man 2 wasn't good, though. Oh. Not on the DS, anyways. Iron Man 1 might have been fine. The first um, one... Like, I don't want to get us. I won't say it was mm-hmm. great, but I love games where you can fly. Like, I just... When you're, like, a, a, a normal-sized person sure. flying, uh, Flight Simulator is okay, I guess. Um, yeah. But, no, like, I really love games... Uh, I'm trying to think of one that did this really well. Games where you move so fast that, like, it starts, like, stretching the screen and it makes you feel, like, slightly out of control because, like, your character is, like, just moving so fast. I want, like, a Flash game where it's like that, where either, like, time looks like it's standing still or where you just move so fast that, like, the screen, like, starts to blur. Oh, that was a tangent here. We're getting way (laughs) off topic. We haven't been talking about video games in a long time. Uh, Saints Row, I think, 4 the, did a good job. First, no, Simeon, stop. Uh, the first reply to this dude's, like, how to save hero clicks, like, thing. He's got uh, colossal... seven whole points of how to save hero clicks. Sorry, he's got seven. You're right. You're right. One of them is, so I think, something that hasn't happened before. Right. Uh, bring back prize support for every event. Um, what else do you have? Uh, do legacy cards are cheap, blah, blah. Oh, this one. Uh, more non big two releases. That means like Undead Set and then like WWE, like whatever. He wants more non theme releases. I don't think just do since it. like 2013 or 2018. Just get new licenses, WizKids. Get new Drop licenses. your prices, four so figures easy. per booster, and pull new IPs. Super easy. You know, do all of didn't those talk things. about that. Why four? Why go back to four? And then drop. Why not no just idea. say in your in your magical world, Hester? You could have just said drop the booster price. Yeah. Why also cut yourself a fake? I don't understand. Is it? Or, do you think that like the extra two dollars that Disney Plus like came with was because the fifth figure? Like if they had just, just been that, like that common Darcy <laughs> Lewis is getting my two dollars. Ah, the, the plastic for this figure costs at least two dollars. These Monica Rambo's are just killing like, the wallet, dude. Yeah. I I feel I feel like at this point in their production run, um, cutting back to four figures would actually be more costly more costly than just keeping the five figure boosters. Um, I don't think that would actually cut costs in any way, unless you're just saying like, I want one common, one uncommon, or like two common, one uncommon, or one common, two uncommon. And then one yeah. rare or one super rare. What? Like some, I don't know what the distribution would be in a four figure booster, I guess. But I have no idea what that is looking at. Um, so uh, Colossal goes on to say he wants more different variety for competitive formats. Again, I don't think competitive is like the way to do growth of games or whatever. But already, WizKids has tried to do that. They tried Skirmish. Wasn't a big success, uh, but now ROC is 300 Silver Age, right? So that's at least something unique and different than 300 Modern Age. So there's your two competitive formats, right? Talk to your venue about other stuff, but he just has some terrible hot takes here. Uh, 200 points sealed league. That sounds awful. I do not want to play a 200 point sealed game. Uh, it does not sound fun. 
Um, and then he also says 350 points of narrative play. Don't know what that means, Love but I hate play. I hate the half point value. I never understood people that would run because I know there's people that have done this, but like events where it 350, where it well, ends and not it divisible by a hundred. Adding anything like it doesn't end up yeah. adding enough, and it I'm doesn't like, end up like do cutting enough. So it's not like well, 400 takes us too long because it's a whole hundred extra points. But 300 gets over too like soon. So at 350, oh, we find yeah. we end our games right at 50 minutes. Like I don't, I don't know. So there's there's all sorts of things. I think uh, advertising. I can't agree with like advertising. At first, I was going to be like, dude, comic book advertising. Who reads and buys like comics anymore? But then I, I googled it, and comics did see record sales last year <laughs> for like the past 10 years. So I guess. People do read more comics just because I don't just because they don't make a good series that I enjoy doesn't mean people aren't reading comics so maybe ads and comics could work I do think ads like for sure when I read an old comic uh, it makes me feel even older when I see a hero clicks ad and yeah. there's like no Oreo dials you know what I mean it's like supernova and I'm like oh I didn't realize the comic was that old Ooh, gross yeah. what am I like the art looks fine and normal but no it's actually a hero clicks <laughs> ad from 2007 yeah. like, this, oh no this comic looked like it was way way newer than the 90s yeah. but suddenly I see mech warrior what is this a stretch armstrong freaks you out for a second you're like what is like, happening what try is new this? mountain dew code red oh what year is it <laughs> no Oh, yeah. all of the like the don't do the dare to do or dare to not do drugs or whatever those ones. Oh, yeah. the drink milk ones where it's like Green Lantern, with, like a milk mustache. Oh, like gosh. what? What is Every, this? Yeah, What's they just happening? gave everyone a milk oh. mustache and they were like, "Hey, <laughs> hey, kid, hey, calcium's good for your bones." So weird. Oh man, what a um, weird man. ad campaign. Because that was like it was man. It wasn't necessary. There was no like calcium deficiency in the country, but they were just like, drink more That's milk or you'll break. Big dairy, bro. I'm telling yeah, you, big dairy, dairy is. They were definitely it pushing it. I mean, it were, dude. I you, were, you have no room to talk. You know, uh, beef. It's what's for dinner. Was hey, now, uh, wait, hold on, yeah. hold on a second. <laughs> Beef is what's for dinner, and that was an incredibly viral uh, ad campaign in the not in the nineties. Yeah. <laughs> No, so, I uh, beef. I, you know, let's let's table dinner. this discussion. Let's not let's not attack <laughs> any more people, especially if the attacks are thrown my yeah, way. Yeah, let's get after all uh, these farmers and ranchers. I, I certainly rid of them. don't have a sign outside of our ranch that does say "beef is what's for dinner." That may or may not exist. Let's just move on, shall we? Hungry for uh, apples. Hungry <laughs> for. That's a, a Richard and Mortimer reference. What? Oh, stop. I can't stand you. Um, Only high IQ listeners will get that one. I, I do like uh, this one person, Exothermic here. Uh, too many words to read. Sorry there, Exo. He does say, uh, put ads in comics. Come on. <laughs> DC is desperate for money, right? You can buy ads in DC comics for nothing, right? I, DC my, is desperate for money. My and, thing with that yeah, is maybe. print comics are on like a downswing like they're i won't say they're it's like gotta be doing digital terrible, to be but your, digital right? and um i don't know if you guys have bought trade paperbacks or like you know collections or omnibuses lately but they don't include ads between like the pages like they do in comics in those so when you buy ads for comics it literally gets printed with that like issue of comics so anyone that buys it if they're not just buying it to like slab it and potentially sell it kind of thing, they might yeah. see it, but like most people that end up reading the storyline probably won't. So it would be really cool if, you know, they like halfway through the X of Swords storyline or like towards the end of the X of Swords storyline, it was like now that you've read the comic, play the game like hero clicks x of sword set and like you know showed a bunch of the figures off and stuff that'd be great except most people will wait until the comics finished and then read the um trade paperback or they'll read like the marvel unlimited like the digital uh if they do pick up the floppy like maybe they read through it maybe they just slab it like i don't know what the metrics are on that anymore but i do know that they're a lot lower because there's way more options just like who do you know that watches syndicated TV instead of like streaming services or YouTube? 
Yeah. I don't know anyone that just watches I, uh, like, actual cable TV anymore. Uh, yeah, again, like why, why guys put I an ad with? on cable Maybe. TV? Maybe. It's like, uh, like what Magic do, you call do it? so the, well. Uh, I feel like when you think about like Pokemon Yu Gi Oh! Magic, you can buy them at Walmart. Maybe that's just me. I feel like if we could find a way for hero clicks to be able to be slapped on a shelf at Walmart without getting stolen disgustingly, like how they were at uh, whatever those one stores were that NECA had a, a thing with. I forget what they're called Hastings, Hastings, Hastings. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think if you make hero hooks easier to market, I feel like that's what they were trying to do with Dice Masters. You know, like, look how easy it is to, to not steal Dice Masters in this simple, small product that didn't take up a lot of room on the shelf. I think that could be a way. Maybe that's what people are saying when they say four figure booster packs. Because this Owl Man dude, I keep I'm scrolling through this thread. I keep seeing people say they want four figure booster packs, and I I literally do not get why, and, um, except for that they're old. That's all I can think of is that these yeah. people are old well, and they want of, the like, old ways back. They're, what's their like, joint? Why date? on because earth would you want less pe? If their joint date doesn't have a a one or a two after the zero, then uh, yeah. It's possible that they've been playing this game for too long. You know, and like uh, this this owl dude, he's like, uh, no more dials on cards. And I'm like, again, who cares? If we're going forward, if we're growing the game, this does make it easier for me to see. Maybe no more my opponent can look at it. I could agree with, but like dials on cards, as if you ask me, made my games go by way faster. I can see where I'm going to push to. I can see what damage I'm going to take and figure out if I want to mastermind it, if I want to keep it, whatever. I think Dallas and Cards is awesome. He does say smaller sets, 10 commons, 10 uncommons, like whatever. He wants really small sets, right? I do think they hey, could dude, cut down. This if out, make a Disney Plus set. was a super small set. Disney Plus yeah. had 56 characters in it. It is the smallest set. It's got to be the smallest set in modern besides I think gravity. If they're going to cut down on the size of the set, they should make it like even. So it's like eight commons, eight uncommons, eight rares, eight super rares, eight chases, or something. I don't know. Maybe not even do chases, but like something like that where it's because like having 15 commons or 14 commons in like a 40 figure set just seems like a lot of commons like it seems like way too many yeah it's just rough man i don't want to get so many i do pumping again i like nightwing here a lot of the same thing reduced cost yes i think if it got cheaper everybody would agree they'd buy more um Again, it's the have two mandatory Marvel DC sets, but also one indie. In a perfect world where it was easy to get licenses, I do think that would be great for the game. Don't get me wrong. I want WWE Wave 2 and Undead Wave 2 just as much as you guys, maybe more. Um, probably the thing I like the most is like rotate between a summer event being Marvel or DC. Again, we don't know how much of this WizKids can actually control. It's That's like the tough thing about all of this. I think, yeah, a Marvel or DC set or summer event a year is awesome i always look forward to the summer events even when i didn't have like a venue that i could even like go to or travel to i was like oh wow they're doing age of ultron this year and i remember like my eyes glazed over like they not glazed over whatever they like popped started to sparkle when i saw the avengers quinjet was like the final like prize for month six or whatever and i was like whoa it's beautiful you know i have to get it somehow even though i literally can't play in any of these events gotta go buy it so like yeah having those cool big prizes that was probably to me when i was like the most jazzed about the game and it felt like there's like summer events every year fear itself or the realms age of ultron that is when there's like it felt like there's a ton of buzz in the air electricity in the shop and i was just like wow this is awesome it's popping off people are having a good time we're rolling there's a ton of people coming in you know, to me, summer events are like the lifeblood of hero clicks, and you get more of those rolling. Yeah. You know, not like, you know, I think that's great. I think when, that's 100% what we should be doing. The things with that is like, it, it, it is like the best merger of casual and competitive because, like, the casual people get figures that are only available through like this kind of thing. Um, and then the competitive people like have their chance for like the prizing and they get to play like, you know, their favorite format, Sealed, which um, I hear is like, competitive players favorite way to play is like a balanced format where they can't stack the deck in their favor or cheat by uh exploiting their opponent's lack of knowledge or anything like that so <laughs> probably <laughs> i'll probably cut that part um but no yeah. like summer op events 
that was like the biggest events for me as well. Like I obviously started right towards the tail end of War of Light, but uh, there were so many players that right after War of Light ended, I never saw them play Heroclix again. I'd see them for like Warhammer. I'd see them for Magic. I'd see them in the shop all the time. But after War of Light, I never saw them again. Like playing Hero. Yeah, playing that's Heroclix. Rough. Um, and so it like was like a very special time. And I really hoped that age of Ultron would bring those same people back. Cause I was still new enough where I didn't realize what like was so special yeah. or light. And so age of Ultron came out and I was like, Hey guys, like new, like summer OP. It's like, you know, age of Ultron. It's going to be like a couple of, like, you know, special boosters this month. And then like month three and four are different. And, uh, none of them turned out like they were just like nah like we still sad yeah we still got like eight people or whatever but all those original guys that i I started playing with and i thought like you know this was like my my crew my my hero clicks buds um as soon as war of light was over they were out like they had collections but they were no longer playing like they they kept their collections and they just you know played their other games i feel like that's like something like players ourselves need to work on i'm not like a big dc guy compared to how i am a marvel guy but if there's an event i just love hero clicks i just you know love the game itself i'm gonna play both and you know war of the realms i was not as jazzed for because like none of the prizes i liked but it was super fun sealed kind of the opposite is true with like age of ultron sealed didn't look that cool a lot of the characters were kind of bland or like bad it didn't seem like rough sealed like all the prizes were awesome. Like that Quinjet, loved that Quinjet. Oh my gosh, it sparkled in my eye when I first saw that Quinjet. It was the most beautiful thing in the universe. Loved it. Um, but yeah, no, I think monthly OP kit stuff. I think that's that's the way to go. The summer events, yeah, big big boost there. I think them finally and, getting back to a full booster set. Oh yeah, with a like the the X of Swords, Ten of Swords, like the full booster set plus the three months of special like exclusive figures and um, accessories and like, you know, equipments and like whatever you want to call it. Uh, and each month is a great transition back to like organized play. I think, you know, obviously we'll have to wait till we see, but I think right. uh, like my local venues will see an uptick in uh, turnout because of, you know, people that are like regulars but can't make it every week, they might like, you know, put stuff off and like try and like force to be able to make it every yeah. week so that they can participate. Uh, people that might have like played or used to play and like they just like really want to participate because they see like, yep. oh, they've got exclusive prizings, you know, they got Pogger Pog. Uh, Whoa, Pogger Pog. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh. Stuff like that, it's like you know, uh, they might they might come back. Like it's hard to yeah. say. <clears throat> and and you know, I'm not an X Men fan, but I like that it's battle royales, and that that was another thing I liked about Civil War being battle royales. And <clears> throat's <throat> getting scratchy. Uh, but yeah, I like the difference. I like it's not a normal two booster sealed. You're on the wallet into a battle royale format after all these years of not having two booster sealed summer OP events. So I'm really cool with that. Hopefully this just opens the floodgates to more OP events. OP events. Oh, absolutely. I think they're just awesome for the community. I want to read this one comment by Robert. It's kind of a, a joke one. Robert with a bunch of numbers after his name. This is an 08 join date, so you get with a grain of salt here. Uh, he just says, release an official point formula. Boom. Aim if, if fixed. And I'm like, no. I don't think I'm going to get a new player uh, to join. Yeah, I'm, I'll be yeah. like, I'll walk up to him and be like, hey, this game's got a point hey, formula. Hey, my game's got a point formula. Like, is For that going to get a new player? Points, you get one extra click. Yeah. You like, explain nah, to him the, the deep That's... magic that is Hero Clicks point formula. I, I don't think I don't think that gets. I was unsarcastically to told by someone recently that there is a point formula and. I once again, for like the thousandth time in my Hero Clicks career, rolled my eyes and said, "Oh, is there?" Like, I don't doubt yeah. that there could be. It's just like I would all like. It's one of those things where, um, I would have to see it to ever believe it. Like, I I cannot take point formula on faith. 
that is something where at this point in my hero clicks career i absolutely have to see it if i ever am to believe it because i feel like it's either you know like 12 whiteboards deep of differential equations and like weird trigonometry looking like models and stuff or it's just like round up to the nearest 50 and then minus 25 or something like wacky oh gosh. like that like some it's really like, what do you think map? it should be round it up by five and then minus 20 it's like i don't know it's like oh minus 20 why well because it's a uh, you know post wonder woman 80 so every every point formula is minus 20 now uh, i do want to read this one comment from uh uh, well, it's a response. So this person says it's um, their name's Exothermic. So whoever this Sounds person like a loser. is, it's pretty bad. They didn't <laughs> join till 2019, like November. Whoa, 2019. whoa! Is this um, a baby? Is, yeah, it, is this an actual like, child with at a computer? It's gotta be a really young person. <laughs> a little no, boss baby. No clue how to play. Uh, yeah. They say in response to a really long post that I was gonna read but decided not to because. Um, just reasons. Uh, Many words. <laughs> so the quote is, I mentioned something like My Hero Academia as a hot property that would fit. So this is something that like me and Calder might have met this person because I will read this part of the quote. So this person's Rosma. Uh, Rosma says, when I spoke to the CFO of Heroclix a few years ago at the last world, so this would have been 2019 when me and Calder were also talking to the CEO or CFO, oh. um, but uh, he was just out, like out in the lobby, talking to like a bunch of HeroClix players and um, letting them ask him like a million questions. Uh, he was cool, asking yeah. a small group of a small group which properties we might want for future sets. His ideas: GI Joe and Transformers, both properties that had their heyday in the '80s and would have also likely continued to skew towards an older audience. First of all, like I don't remember him ever saying. G.I. Joe and Transformers either. for future this sets. This is he at never the time once... I think they had the license from Hasbro, right? Yeah, so this would have been Brian, yeah. and he never once said what their ideas for future sets were. He definitely oh. was asking what our ideas were and like was like feeding back and forth, like, oh, yeah, like, blah, 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 this and that kind of thing. He never once, like, because this would have been, like, NDA stuff where he if he was like, yeah, I'd really like to do G.I. Joe and Transformers as the CFO of this company... We also have licensing with G.I. Joe and Transformers. Yeah. And I'm allowed to tell people this. Like, this is not something that he actually said. So this is just a straight up lie so, yeah. or you're misremembering uh, Rosma. Um, but then it says, uh, I mentioned something like My Hero Academia as a hot property that would fit extremely well with the given systems that, and he looked, or with the given systems. So I imagine, I imagine they mean like, the powers and like stats and stuff my hero academia would fit in well uh you know why because it's pretty much a ripoff of every hero cl- Cause it's, every cause it's every superhero super from yeah. like the 60s to now like i'm not disparaging my hero academia it's not about the powers or like the uh like fight scenes it's about like the you know uh it's about drive it's about power we stay hungry we devour uh, put in the work, put in hair, the hours. Actually. That's what My Hero Academia is all uh, about. That was painful, um, Simeon. That was painful. <laughs> no, but like, you know, there's nothing new under the sun. My Hero Academia is 90%, like 95% stuff that exists in other media. Yeah. You've got like the Kitty Pride Boy uh, that's really like strong. Um, you've got like tape arms guy that is basically like much worse Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah Spider-Man. you've got Ice and Fire Boy who is literally just Iceman and Human Torch like combined kind of but worse. Ooh. Like you've got you've Ooh. got all of them. You've got Frog Girl. Is there anyone in any comics that is like a Frog Girl? Oh. Well, there's nope. I don't know nope. Frog Man. Oh, Paul, um, what? No way. But uh, he's, girl, he's, he's no, it's more like yeah, Toad. It's not a he's, man. I don't know. Yeah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah you've got you've no, got Uravity. Uh, if only there was get... somebody like I don't know, like Graviton or something that like messed with gravity. That'd be crazy. Um, but they're all that children, so that's that's the real the hot work. take on it, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so 
They mentioned Hero or My Hero Academia as a hot property that would fit extremely well with the given systems, and he looked at me like I was speaking Latin. It's probably because he doesn't have any clue what My Hero Academia is. Like, is. I wouldn't blame him. He's he's an adult. Like, yeah. not you, every adult watches anime. Like I I do because I'm yeah. into that, but not yeah, every adult watches anime. Like everyone I've worked with has no clue what anime is. Uh, yeah. There is a bubble when it comes to creativity with our company, and it needs to be popped before we can see the game grow again. Well, thank you, Rosma, for that that nice walk down memory lane when uh, yeah. I was probably standing like shoulder to shoulder with you, or at least in the same little circle, because I remember that same you know, conversation when slightly differently. This person like first said the ideas, G.I. Joe Transformers, and then some idiot next to me said Undead 2 and Evil Dead. <laughs> what an idiot. Those movies, I was I was just waiting for him to just like berate something that we had said. And be like, and These some, guys some jerk in a cowboy hat came up after we were mid-conversation and said, it'd be really cool to do Evil Dead. <laughs> man, uh, what a yeah. stupid idiot. Those movies came out like 30 years ago. With the times, old man. Yeah, um, if only they made a video game like yeah, recently, made a video game. about that property. Yeah. Uh, a TV so all of that to say, Exothermic was responding to the My Hero uh, Academia as a hot property comment. Uh, so uh, this this person, whoever they may be, uh, probably lives in like some northern state somewhere. Again, um, some weird like baby child thing that just joined in <laughs> yeah, November. Joined so, in 2019. Okay. It's uh, the child. Probably married, but you know. Um, My Hero Academia that. would that be such weird, an incredible property for them to pick up. I love it as a 28-year-old man. Oh, a 28-year-old man. What? That's so much older than I thought this person yeah, was Yeah, I thought be. they were young. Uh, but we sell My Hero Academia stuff at work. And the average age people buying all of that is probably 17. And wow, do they buy that stuff. Well, you know, congratulations on... Uh, I guess Alex oh. has been married for a while now. I can't really say congratulations uh, anymore. Um, um what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're there's a lot people. of Alex's in here. Um, who could possibly? There's a handful. There's them. a handful of Alex. Yeah. Um, and there's there's more than one 28 year old man in Hero Clicks. I think has to be at least more than one. There's at least um, one. No, but I agree. Like my academia is incredibly popular. I don't know if it's as popular as it is now as it was like two three years ago, but it's still obviously super incredibly popular. Anime is popular. People like keep saying anime on Facebook. Now, again, this goes to the G.I. Joe Transformers thing. If you say Naruto in, like, One Piece and Dragon Ball, you're old. Super old. <laughs> Get your walker and take your meds, Grandpa. Yeah. Um, because that's if disgusting. What you said I've was never part of about that ever again. Toonami. Um, yeah. You're old. Um, you're old, bro. You are you are ancient, dog. Um, but, yeah, My Hero Academia yeah. would sell really well. The only bad thing about My Hero Academia is I've... I've met My Hero Academia fans. I've been to comic conventions. I've been to anime conventions. And they might be some of the absolute most annoying fans in the universe. Now, I don't know if that's because I'm an old man now. And they are like, you know, 17, 16, whatever, teenagers. Yeah. Maybe I just don't like teenagers. Yeah, imagine but if they you might like, be showed up to a convention and there was like a 30-year-old like Shigaraki that was like hanging out. Oh, yeah. All That'd day. be <laughs> super awkward. It would be very weird. <laughs> very You're like, weird. oh, these these children that like my hero academia. Yeah, oh, wait, yeah, why is yeah. this old dude got all these hands I, stapled to his face? Yeah, yeah. What's with that? Why does his, his beard look like that? It's yeah, why he got a beard? Why has he got a beard? The character doesn't have a beard. Yeah, he's so have, inaccurate. His shaved. cosplay is so inaccurate. That's just a shame to the source material. Oh gosh, that's an insight Fantastic. joke that only we probably get really just uh, you and i actually I will, yeah i will three say people, three uh, speaking people of like toonami and uh, uh ye oldy time anime the fact that nobody ever says like a gundam set no one ever says like no right it's always you know it's always no, dragon Evan ball Gellion, it's always naruto uh, it's always, no gurren like, lagon none of that the big no ones gundam. yeah gurren yeah look gurren lagon be great I literally that's killed like a small enough Gurren set Lagan that you could set. easily do like a couple super boosters or a like starter set with like two giants and a handful of like normal size figures. I I would probably like sell what's one of the body parts. You saw a kidney, right? You got two of those. I would sell one yeah. of my kidneys for Gurren Lagon set. I a would. Lump of 
uh, you can sell a lump of your liver because you'll regrow it. Oh, there you go. I'd, I would easily, like, and it could be the whole knock me out, put ice in the bathtub type and sell on a kidney. I so want to go and log on to that so bad. Um, but yeah, it's so weird. But I think people have some decent ideas. I think there are some good ideas here on ways to help grow the game or hero clicks. I don't, I didn't want those threads to be like, Oh, you think the game is dying? You're so stupid, blah, 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 blah. And then it's like, oh, those are those are your ideas to save the game. Oh, you're so stupid, blah, blah, blah. I didn't want this to be like us just like poo-pooing on, no. on both sides of people and thinking we're better. As much um, as I uh, do <laughs> think that like HD Realms overreacts, um, they normally do. they say the sky is falling and like the first thread was essentially like the sky's yeah. already fallen and everyone is dead. Heroclix is dead. Everything's dead and done. Right. Uh, and that's just like silly to me. Um, but no, like the uh, how to save hero clicks. I mean, I can't disparage too much of it because it's just people that are just, you know, saying like, this is what I'd really like to see in the game. Like essentially anytime they say this is what I think hero clicks or what whiz kids should do. It's essentially them saying like, this is what I would like to see in the game. So uh, whether it's great ideas or bad ideas, it is something that uh, like whiz kids shouldn't not look at like shouldn't shouldn't not not look at uh because yeah these are people that actually are still playing the game and still want to see it succeed whereas the other thread was people that had thrown in the towel so i'm i'm excited looking forward to the future of the world so we are talking about now oh no we have to break these threads so from gosh Dead, dead to alive, dead or alive <laughs> from, on this. From a dead or alive to like a cowboy uh, on this steel horse I ride, uh, and I'm wanted. Dead or alive? Just, no. How do we? How do we rate these? I don't want to rate them independently of each other. No, um, this is definitely a duo thread. Uh, one duo was inspired thread. by the other. Yeah, I'm just gonna say, go watch Chicken Little, 2007 animated film. To make your own decision. God, is that right? Is it 2007? Was it? I mean, that sounds about right. 2005! Oh, so close. Wow, I feel really old now. Yeah, go watch Chicken Little 2005 to figure out uh, you're at your own choice. No, I'm going to give these threads. As far as HC Realms go, this gives a classic HC Realms vibe. The sky is falling and everything is wrong and we can complain about the way everything is. Then also, there's a little bit of positivity where it's like, well, things could be better and we should want things to be better. And maybe this is how it could do it. Even if they are sometimes unrealistic or weird i still don't get the cut back to four figures uh so i'm giving this a four out of five figure booster <laughs> for these for these threads because in my brain i still don't understand i still don't yeah. understand the one if you go back to the four figure the best boosters. thing so about I'll give that it four is out of five figures in the x of swords organized play kits it will be you're four right out of five figures you're gonna get their the wish yeah in. that's like, so like the that was the first thing i saved. thought when i read that it was like we actually are getting that. I mean, that's not what they meant by four, oh, absolutely four booster not, but figures, but it's yeah, happening. we are getting four figure boosters again. Like they're going to be four figures in each organized play booster. We um, did it. We saved Hero Clicks. So instead of yeah, yeah, watch Hero Clicks will grow to like millions. It'll be on ESPN. Yeah, dude. And, uh, esports. Random like, people, kids, kids in China are going to be like. Only four figures in these boosters. That's way much easier than five. <laughs> I love this. I'm going to buy the heck out of this game. I hate buying things with odd numbers. Yeah, I'm I so can't glad stand odd there's numbers. There's an even number of figures to collect now. Um, I will rate this because it seems so old and stinky. I will rate this uh, as uh, the stinky cheese man of the uh, Fairly Stupid Tales because we were going with like Chicken Little kind of thing. So. Uh, if you've never read the Stinky Cheese Man and other fairly stupid tales, uh, it's pretty good. Fantastic. It's a children's Ooh. book, so. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah, it's it's just like Goldilocks and uh, that sounds like Fog it's... Prince and stuff like that. Oh, but they're all actually like, those ones specifically. Yeah, they're all like it... twisted, like versions of like slightly twisted uh, versions. Some of, like, Brothers like, Grimm famous, type uh, yeah. type stuff or whatever. Okay. Yeah, ugly duckling, okay. except when the ugly duckling grows up instead of turning into a swan, he's just like a really, really ugly duck. He's oh. like, he grew up and he's just really ugly. Bro, bro. Yeah. That's uh, that's just like, well, sometimes you grow up and you're still ugly, fam. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. Um, 
we have a we had a question over here on the Discord. We're, we're first, uh, yeah, this one goes with the the theme. So we're gonna keep it. Matt Reed asks, and this is a good question, and it's an interesting way of thinking about things. So let's open our minds here. Do you think HeroClix would still be doing events like Worlds or National, or even making clicks if influencers stopped creating content and creating events throughout COVID? So, really quickly, this is. Let's, let's just make this this fake fictional world, right? There are a ton of people that create content for Hero Clicks. There's no shortage of people that are, uh, whether they're just recording their home games or games they play against themselves and posting them on YouTube. People, you know, that make podcasts every week, that make funny skit videos every week, that uh, do unboxings, that have a crazy amount of content and put a ton of work. Oh, that's us. Ha <laughs> ha. No, but like there's a ton of people that put in a, a ton of work that you would consider influencers content creators whatever right um youtube channels podcasts that are constantly making content every week or maybe not making every week but they're making it more consistently than just people randomly throwing out videos let's say all of that stopped right so what do we have left we purely maybe hero clicks world is connected via facebook groups hc realms just kind of talking back and forth i think this what content creators do help keep the game alive and not only keep the game alive, but make it seem like, oh, it's a big world out there of people that play this game. Because to me, Heroclix is a lot of small communities they not all know about each other. Content creators and stuff be like, oh, these are the tournaments that are going on. People that host tournaments online, that was a huge part of getting through COVID because even people that couldn't play and a lot of people still weren't able to play. Um, there's like Brad Broyles, the ROC, you know, um, we hosted a tournament a handful of times. Other people hosted tournaments a handful of times. That's really huge. Uh, Alex hosted a tournament, you know. There's quite a lot of things like that going on. And I would say Hero Hooks is still would still be made. I think we can tell just based off their release schedule. They're still going to release all those sets, I feel like, no matter what. what but I, so I also tough. think... I think when you look at like the content creation and you look at like the Facebook groups and stuff, I think you are seeing a very small minority of the actual hero clicks, like what WizKids sells to. Uh, so yeah, the people that we reach through our podcast and through our YouTube, um, while we like appreciate you, uh, I feel like you are in in the minority of like hero clicks players because there are so many tabletop people, there are so many or like kitchen tabletop, there are so many. Um, like just collectors that don't really like delve super deep into the game, probably don't look up like content online and stuff like that. So I do think that there's a small, like vocal and important part of community that is just the people that consume and make like content creation and like participate in like online discussions and stuff. Um, But I feel like it's like the much smaller portion of the community as far as numbers go. So uh, do I still think Heroclix would be doing events like Worlds and Nationals or even making clicks? So I'll, I'm going to break this up. I don't think Worlds and Nationals would happen. Um, dang, that's that's rough. That is rough. I would like to say Worlds and Nationals would still have happened. But if like you're saying every content creator, because every content creator <laughs> that's not Dial H, it seems... Uh, participates in these and like a competitive level so if you're saying like some of the most competitive players and people that like try and influence the meta and really like dig deep into like what teams and stuff are like competitive uh, if you're saying they stopped making content for like almost two years would i expect to see them at worlds or nationals no the majority probably not like maybe a few of them but like if they just didn't make content for two years and they just weren't like super invested in hero clicks, like if they, if they weren't participating online and they weren't, you know, doing podcasts or videos or anything like that. Uh, no, I don't think they would just show up for nationals or worlds. I don't think like the trip would be worth it all of a sudden. Um, let's see. Uh, and then the second part making clicks, like it would whiz kids keep making clicks. Uh, that's the part where, Yeah. So collectors, so. right? Smaller, like small groups of players, uh, more casual people. Um, my one venue didn't start playing until about four or five months ago, and 
there was a lot of people in that venue buying out of every set, like me included, but like buying out of every set without a group to even play with, with no reason to actually own those figures. You know, these were like figures that we were buying day one, uh, buying like sealed product day one for no reason really because we were just like collecting it for a future date we knew like eventually like we'd be able to play again and you know that day eventually came and like for like the first couple months where we were playing again at that venue uh it was just bring your new stuff that you never got to play so there's people that were bringing like house of x there was people that bring wow, nice. future foundation like all these like sets that we never actually got to play with um or they never actually got to play with i was playing with it in some aspects in like other venues and uh like south dakota states and like random stuff but even then like i didn't play with it very often or i didn't like get through i never got through my whole house of x sets uh so i do think that they still would have made clicks um if influencers had stopped creating content because i don't think those people are like really influenced by those influencers or by like content creators I think those people collect what they want to collect and they like the figures they like. And I think at the end of the day, they, they like are part of their, like they're their their own little river and like, you know, this different tributary yeah. that like feeds into the same, like bigger river that is like hero clicks or whatever. Uh, and I think personally, I think that they're a much bigger group than the, the people that actually would participate in worlds and Nats, obviously. Worlds of Nats usually hits like 150, 200, somewhere in that range. Yeah. Uh, there's definitely a lot more people that play Hero Clicks than that. Uh, there's way more people that play casually or like way more people that you'll never even see online. Like they'll never actually participate in online discussion because it's just like a fun little game for them. Or it's just like I collect these little miniatures because tiny little statues are fun. Um, so, yeah, it's. It's an interesting little like split cuz it is. Yeah. It is like the first half with like the worlds of nationals questions really tough, but uh the second question I definitely know that hero clicks would still be getting made because um to be honest the competitive community does not make up enough of the market oh. where like the even like the community hey. that watches content, listens to content does not make up enough of a market where it would it really aren't as integral to the community as far as like buying product goes you know worlds and nationals absolutely they're very integral to that that's competitive as far as like buying and making content go or bleh, content uh buying and making whatever hero clicks not as much not as much so as it's important in that and I'd, I'd love for them to be i'd love for uh oh, i'd love for them to be too for I'd love everyone for all that's ever picked that up a hero click hero to clicks, yeah to youtube hero clicks unboxing and potentially run across our our like unboxings that'd be great yeah. uh sadly you know there's only about two thousand hero clicks players that like sometimes watch youtube um we're a real small knit community like yeah i know a lot of or not necessarily like know well but i know of a lot of people in the community um and i will find you if need oh, be oh my gosh exothermic whoa is that a i may know your home you? venue oh you want his address i can give it to him <laughs> oh Gosh. yeah you definitely have his address <laughs> yeah that's true you should find out when he's turning 29 give him a send him a birthday cake or something oh okay or let's do yeah let's do that okay. let's do it all right that's good uh, let's again. It's a really good question. It's a really interesting thing to to ponder. Ponder the question: What if? And I I really like it. Matt Matt is making these banger questions. Last week with the the boxing question. Who would you punch this week? And then, you know, with then, the, what would? Yeah. Honestly, it, it would be such a weird. And if Worlds and Nationals happened, it would be such a weird. Like I feel me. without the social media sharing around, people talking about podcasts, whatever. Obviously, some of the most weird, wacky, diverse teams at Worlds and Nationals. When, um, I don't know how like how you feel, Calder, but personally, even though they didn't get a ton of views towards the end, I feel like had we not done uh, Thursday Throwdown through the majority of like 2020 and 2021, um, I would have lost like a lot of love for the game because oh yeah, for a lot of time, like for the majority of that time. 
that was the only gameplay I was getting. Like, that was the only, like, actual, like, casual gameplay I was getting. Anything else I wanted to do would have been, like, a tournament or, like, some sort of, like, bigger paid-in, like, whatever. Uh, so, yeah. Like, sometimes I feel like that that series was, like, so good for just us to keep playing, to play casually, to play in a really fun way that we would have never allowed ourselves to do if we hadn't been, like, forced to play online. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and I'm happy like, that people got to. I'm happy people got to watch us do it. Had my well, local venue man. never like shut down, and Calder had been like, "Hey, what if we just get online once a week and play a game for an hour?" I might have been just like, "No, that's no, I don't really want. To that's talk all right. to you, bro. It's a little weird." Thanks, but uh, like, uh, I'm probably just gonna like go to my normal venue because, like, spoiler oh, alert, my normal venue oh, real has life. games on Thursday nights. So, right. Yeah, it'd be a little of a clash going on there. Um, but yeah, oh, such an awesome series. If you guys haven't, hate to do this plug now, but go check out our Thursday Throwdown series. We literally play through every single Hero Click set that was ever existing to that point where we stopped, anyways. Um, it's pretty awesome. It's pretty cool. Um, yeah, we're going to do one more listener question just so that way we can say we're up to date on all of them. Clean Sauce asks Favorite type of character sculpt? Venomized, Enixed, Other. Uh, so this is kind of going off of like weird character sculpts. Like types of like, character oh, sculpt, not necessarily. Different like, type of character sculpts, yeah. Specific characters themselves. Um, I will say one of my like my favorite chase themes was definitely like the Hulked Out Heroes. Oh, yeah, Awful there you go. dials, but very cool chase theme. Um, man. Uh, Personally, some of my favorite sculpts are like the Thor sculpts. When people who aren't Thor hold the hammer, those are some of my favorites. Um, a lot of good Captain Americas, but like really cool ones are like Rogue with Thor's hammer. The Spider Man with Thor's hammer is really, really cool looking. Uh, the Deadpool with Thor's hammer. I don't know. Something about like the, the yeah. mighty Thor the version Spider-Man of with Thor's hammer. Yeah. Like those are all really cool sculpts. So I really like the, yeah, the Thor's hammer ones. Those are pretty cool. Enjoy them. I I did specifically get that Spider Man with the Thor's hammer. I think might be from uh, the Hammer of Thor mm. set. Hammer of Thor. Yeah, yeah I might have got that one. one specifically just to like set next to my other hammer wielding people. Yeah, um, there you go. See, I will um, also say like the to go along with like the lightning kind of effect that anyone that's like given the power cosmic. Sometimes they do the, like, weird blue and, like, uh, I don't know. It's, like, an atom kind of, like, symbol that they, like, make out of the effect. So it's, like, a, like, like um, what do they call that? A honeycomb, like, I know what shape. you mean. Yeah. yeah. Like, Micron and Atom have it. Yeah. Well, other people that have it. But, yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Uh, but that, that goes along with, like, the, from the AI set, a lot of, like, the figures in that were given like the little colorful effect uh the cosmic spider-man from oh yeah those well from web of spider-man and from uh what if what if yeah uh both of those had like the weird like cosmic fists kind of things um no i'm i'm also like a huge fan of characters like the captain america human torch who has like the big bubble that like fit oh yeah that's the nova blast but like that's not an effect that a lot of characters ended up getting. I think he's pretty much. Another, you know, another good one is like the zombie versions of characters. I always like the zombie versions of characters. Oh, yeah. The originals, like Colonel America, Hulk, Wolverine, with the missing arm, is hilarious. The new zombie cap is funny. Even like the, the you know the, some of the DC Black Lantern one are really cool too. That Wonder Woman Black Lantern from D Tenth is really oh, like, like a really sweet axe, sculpt, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got the axe. I think so. <clears throat> yeah. um, even, even like, he's not a cool sculpt, but Zombie Aquaman is hilarious because he's got his undead sharks. He's oh, just yeah, a fun yeah. figure. Like, it's hilarious. Um, yeah, the zombie versions of characters. I'm a sucker for the zombie versions of characters. No. Love it. Yeah. Love I'm, it. I'm a big sucker for, uh, like, any alternate dial. So, like, Alternate dial. The Deadpool, yeah, like the cake pool Deadpool. Okay. Uh, like Spider-Man, the Amazing oh, Spider-Man, like Chase yeah. theme. 
Okay. Anytime like the chase theme gets like their own special dial, obviously not like the Regenesis ones because those were that was just like that right, not ones. really. Yeah, but, like when it's like a special thing because then when you pull it, it's like immediately obvious oh. and it's really cool. Um, but yeah, like the AI dials where they were like speckly, the Doom dials from Future Foundation where they were all green. Oh, yeah, um, all those ones like. I'm glad they brought Disney those Plus back. Blue, the, so yeah, good. The blue on Disney Plus is like a great touch. Um, is there anything else that they did recently? I don't think so. I guess like now it's yeah. The Wonder Woman did have. There's a few sculpts in Wonder oh, Woman yeah, where I mean, there was like uh, bases. Yeah, like the uh, Red Sun base, and then Wonder Woman was standing on her like W icon yeah. base. A few the, characters like that. Title That's Wonder cool. Woman. Yeah, title Wonder Woman. Title. On, like, the big yeah. W. 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 Yeah. Doing the uh, uh, all right. Generation X pose. Oh, gosh. Stop. So that is we're nearing the, the end of our show. I'm do a few shout outs here. So if you want to write us questions like old Matt did here, you can do so. Send us a message on Facebook.com. You can send us a message on Twitter. Dial H4. It's the number four hero clicks on Twitter. Make sure to uh, like, comment, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. But head on over to our YouTube channel. On the latest video, we're doing a giveaway when we hit 1,000 subscribers. We're about to announce all the prizes that you're going to get at 975. I know all you guys are subscribed, so I don't even know why I'm telling you. But if for some reason you're not, or you know someone that's not, and you want to recommend our content, check out the Dial H for Hero Clicks crew. They make some pretty cool stuff on there. Simeon's got videos. Caller's got videos. It was fun stuff. Look at all this fun stuff. So check out our YouTube I'm going to shout out some Patreons. This is all our $15 and above Patreons. Thanks to you guys so much for uh, helping us out. We got Darth Jono 22, Ethan Jacobs, Matt Reed, Alex Morris, and Chance McCall. Thank you guys so much for supporting us on Patreon. If you want to support us on Patreon, get your name right on the podcast, have a chance to win some cool hero hooks every month, get some awesome action tokens and stickers, you can do so at patreon.com slash dialage for hero hooks. Also, it lets you join our freaking Discord, and our Discord is so fun. We've been playing Bad Samaritan. If you don't know what that is, go back two episodes. We play it with Patreon guest Bill on air. And Bad Samaritan is super fun. It's not only that, but it's free after you join our Patreon. And then if you win that month's Bad Samaritan, we play it about three, four times a month, you get 10 extra entries into the giveaway. Normally you get a dollar per entry, right? So that's $10 worth of entries into the giveaway you get for playing Bad Sam, which is just included with your Patreon. All sorts of fun stuff over on Patreon. If you've noticed our quality go up on the podcast, on our YouTube videos, that is because we are pumping in quite a lot of our Patreon dollars into lights, mics, videos, cameras, all sorts of stuff. We are using it, putting it right back into the show, making sure you guys get good quality content. So thank you so much for listening to Dial H for Hero Clicks. Man, we're all the way up to 972 right now. 972, it's insane. And I, I can't wait to announce what else we're giving away. And then, like there I said, we we're going to go live Some good stuff on uh, on YouTube. Once we hit 1,000, we're going to go live. We're going to do all the giveaways. And we're just going to hang out have a good time. So if you liked our episode 400 live stream, you're going to like our 1,000 our subscriber live stream. It's going to be good. Yeah. We also, good. Um, we, we're still tallying for the x of swords unboxing um the giveaway of the deadpool at least oh, right. at the very least yep. the, like the the super deadpool uh to one of the commenters on that and uh that was two whole weeks ago but the set isn't out yet so it's, it's about another two weeks right. i think till the set's out wait till the set's so released we once the set's re- like officially released on like that wednesday or whatever like the official release day is uh i'm gonna delete that video and uh, oh my forget no <laughs> i'll probably so unlist it deadpool. i'll probably unlist it just so that i can like tabulate all the names before like i don't know i probably don't even need to be do that to be honest i don't think we get comments like that immediate but uh just so i don't like miss something or whatever that is like the hard cutoff point will be that wednesday uh but that sounds good yeah we will find a way to do that. I'll get all of the names tabulated, one vote each, and we will also draw for that as soon as uh, the Ten of Swords set officially drops. But uh, if you want to get the Ten of Swords set when it officially drops, or maybe just that Deadpool, and you're like, you know what, Dial H never draws my name, I never win any raffles, um, 
My name's Simeon. I, I always lose raffles. If that's your outlook on life, I understand it completely. And that's why I use CoolStuffInc.com. Because I never win, so I have to buy. And so at CoolStuffInc.com, I can go on there and I can I can get that birthday cake Deadpool. I can get that uh, Deadpool with a rubber duck around him. I can get all these cool things because they sell them to me for money. And there's no there's no random draw involved. So I don't have to worry about luck being a very unlucky man that I am. Uh, so yeah, check them out at CoolStuffInc.com where you can find all... All the latest Heroclix singles and sealed products. Happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional Heroclix. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Over oh, okay. six yeah. people think I am funny. It's the hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which Absolute fools, it's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clips like that forever. Are you <laughs> kidding me? Hey Google, attack someone. Let's attack Simeon because he's a jerk. Happy trails.